Forest, they defer, so Wake Forest will receive the opening kick. We'll get a look at that high-flying offense right away. A game of tremendous importance in the ACC. Usually, that game would be Clemson FSU, but this year, it's NC State and Wake Forest. Trenton Gill about to lay into it. Keyshawn Williams back at the five-yard line. And that'll be through for a touchback. It'll come out to the 25. Sam Hartman, who broke the school record against North Carolina, responsible for seven touchdowns, Tim, in one game, five passing and two rushing. He can do it all. Yeah, and I'm, you know, it's good to point that out because he's a better runner than I think people realize. He's got great command of this offense. His journey has been a unique one for being the starter to then being the backup. But he has taken over between la last year and this year and been really good for the Demon Deacons. Wake's last three games have been ridiculous. They have scored 170 points. That's 57 points per game with that mesh style offense. Ellison getting the first carry. One of the problems, of course, is even though that's a school record over three games, they've also been allowing 40 points per game. Yeah, that's been the challenge. I think the expectation that they're going to score 30 every game. You just need the defense to come up with enough stops. Dave Clawson said this week the defense has either been really, really good or really, really bad. Let's we'll see what shows up tonight. He's going to throw, and that's going to be batted away. And man, that happened several times in the North Carolina game. There's a flag down, but batted down once again. That was a real problem against the Tar Heels. Yeah, and it's an interesting situation with their offense where. The defensive pass interference. The pass is tipped. Incomplete pass. Third down. And that's a good call by the official because the ball is batted by Devin Betty. And you watch Hartman. After the fake, he's climbing up in the pocket. Normally, guys are retreating back into the pocket after the fake. But because of the way the mesh works, he climbs right afterwards. Wants to throw again. Third down and nine. Now he's going to run with it. Hartman on the move. Getting to the 30 takes a little bit of a hit there as he goes out of bounds. Stopped by Chris Ingram. Came up from the corner, but he gains six. He can hurt you that way. He can. And you know what's interesting is you see Drake Thomas running him out of bounds. And Drake Thomas is a guy that has really had to step up with the injuries at the linebacker position. And he's kind of been forced to be the signal caller. But I've really been impressed with his ability to make plays in space as he runs Hartman out of bounds short of the first down. He's really stepped up with Isaiah Moore and Peyton Wilson's injuries. So wait to punt on fourth down and three. With Thayer Thomas fading back. And of the 20-yard line taking the football there, a 46-yard kick. So Devin Leary. They talk about his arm talent, and I'm fascinated by that because it seems to me you can't teach that. You're born with that. Now, he's a talented thrower. There's no question about it. Just even watching him pregame throw the football, he can spin it just about as well as anyone you'll see in college football. The other thing he's got going for him, Dave, is he's tough. I think mentally and physically tough. Just hasn't been bothered by some of the things that have been thrown his way. It really stays in the pocket. He hangs in there. Not shy about taking it a flag down right away. Full start, number 54, all pack. So against the Wolf Pack, they'll be backing up right away. Dave, you mentioned the atmosphere here, and it's as good as any atmosphere we've seen. We've done a number of games here, and let's make some crowd noise, a false start to, to start it off when you're backed up near the student section. And a lot of the pack traveling for this one, no question, from all around the state. He's going to air it out onto the sideline and complete. And got that one complete to his favorite man, Imezi, the number one target for a 14-yard gain and a first down. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about with arm talent here. I mean, he's just off the right hash. And that ball is drilled to the sidelines. It's a nice read, excellent throw. Second down and one coming up. And he's back to throw in the pocket. Good time. Airs it out. Long one here. And a tremendous catch. And he's going to be wrestled down. And that's going to be Devin Carter on the near sideline for a huge game for NC State. It's a double move by Devin Carter. <laughs> As we 
talk about arm talent. Let's just continue talking about it because you couldn't have handed it to Devin Carter any better than Devin Leary just threw it to him. For 54 yards. First down at 10 at the 15 yard line. Wolfpack on the move immediately. Going to throw this one into the flat. Going to be wrapped up on the play, and that is Keon Lassane with the catch. And got nothing there. Yeah, and there's the double move. You see the stutter go by Carter, and Leary just does an excellent job of just dropping it right on Carter. Look at the throw. Well, Carter turns around, just puts his hands up, and Leary should be excited about that because you can't throw it any better. North Carolina last week had a lot of success running the football. NC State with a good running attack from time to time. And a handoff for Knight. Knight straight ahead. Zonovan Bam Knight with the carry. Wrapped up by Red and a five yard pickup. I think one of the reasons you see their red zone success, the reason for it is they have big physical receivers. They've got tight ends that are big and athletic that they use down in the red zone and then they still have the ability to run the football so you know a lot at Tim Beck's disposal in situations like this third and six and from the 11 yard line Leary has to run running for his life lost the football it's on the deck and scooped up by NC State around the 20 yard line but big time pressure Brought by Travion Red. He's the rover. He was charging. Yeah, and Devin Leary is trying to get this ball out. It's the right decision to try to throw it away. We need to look and see if this ball starts to come out before his arm is going forward. To me, that looks like he's got control of the football. It should be an incomplete pass. The play under further review. 11.29 to go here in the first. Replay communicator is Peter Voss tonight. So they are going to take a look. Leary under severe pressure by Red. We'll take one more look as we go to the break. And again, fleeing. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and take tailgating very seriously. Game day and beyond, grab a football-ready Big Bow Box. How long are you planning on keeping your new smile? Yeah, that's why Smile Direct Club has their lifetime smile guarantee. Get a doctor directed smile you love, guaranteed for life. Your life. Choose smile, choose direct. Smile Direct Club. Show the world what it means to be an ACC fan at fanatics.com. The largest assortment of officially licensed ACC fan gear anywhere. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com. Officially licensed everything. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, the CEO of MyPillow. Cancel culture has not only affected myself and MyPillow, but millions of you out there. My employees and I want to personally thank each and every one of you for all of your support. At MyPillow, we not only have pillows, but we have hundreds of products, including my new slippers, bathrobes, sleepwear, and my new beds. We're offering the best gifts ever for the best prices ever. For example, we have this exclusive offer on the standard size my pillows, regularly $69.98, now only $19.98 with your promo code. We also have the queen size my pillows, regularly $79.98, now only $24.98 with your promo code. And we have the king size, regularly $89.98, now only $29.98 with your promo code. So go to MyPillow.com now and use the promo code on your screen or call the 1-800 number below to receive this exclusive offer. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. Oh, I love it. The wildest adventure of the year has arrived. For all subscribers, this is special. Is it? it is. Disney's Jungle Cruise, rated PG 13, starts streaming today. 
All right, so this is very interesting. On the field, it was ruled a fumble, recovered by Chase Jones of Wake Forest. Then they go to the review, and here's what they came up with in the end. The pass was forward and incomplete. There is no foul for intentional grounding. The ball will be placed at the 11 yard line. Fourth down. So grounding is a possibility came up. Yeah, now here's the deal. It's it's an incomplete pass. They get that part right. Ball's in Leary's hands as it's going forward. And I think because he's getting hit as he's throwing, and truthfully, he's actually going to throw it in the vicinity of either his tight end Toodle or his back. That you know, because he was hit, it shouldn't be ground. So they have a 28-yard field goal attempt coming up for Christopher Dunn. And he is going to drill that one to put the Wolfpack in front from 28. Now Wake Forest, of course, coming off that tough loss against North Carolina. Dave Clawson said we were not the team I've been watching all season long. He started with, as he chatted with us this week. Four personal foul penalties, which were very out of character for his team. Completely out of character. And when you look at the fact that you know they're up 18 points in the third quarter, you think, all right, here we go. It, this is Wake Forest. They're scoring too many points. But unfortunately for them, defensively, Ty Chandler ran wild, and you know it was a great effort on an onside kick late in the game. But it wasn't enough to get it done, and they couldn't come up with stops. When you think about whether it was a turnover or the penalties, and that's really the thing that I think ends up being the key, those 11 penalties, four of them personal fouls, that's the part where Dave Clawson is saying, who is this right. football team? They kind of took the bait, didn't they? They did, I think they knew. You know, a bit of a rivalry game with an in-state opponent, and, you know, a lot of talking and kind of felt victim to it. Demon Diggins at 8-1, and 5-0 and in the ACC, and the road to the ACC championship goes right through Winston Salem this year and lost to North Carolina was not a conference defeat by the way so keep that in mind with ACC expansion of 14 teams in 2013 Wake and North Carolina were in opposite divisions then that limited the matchups between them in an effort to keep that rivalry going the schools agreed to play a pair of non conference games. One of them this year, they had not met in conference play since 2015. So Wake Forest on the attack. They have scored at least 35 points in every game this season. They're the only team in America that can say that. Ellison's going to get the carry. Christian Beal Smith is out with a lower leg injury, so he will not play in this game tonight. It'll pretty much be Ellison. And the sophomore back, Christian Turner, getting most of the carries. Yeah, in which is, you know, both of those backs have had plenty of carries this year, but certainly good to have your full complement. Under pressure, he's going to go down hard. Corey Durden all over him, the FSU transfer. 6'4, 310, you know he's coming. They're going to lose two on that sack. And North Carolina State did a good job of, of getting to Sam Hartman in the past. I think they feel like they can get to the quarterback, even just rushing three. Like they did there. Third down seven. Hartman, good time in the pocket, but it's tipped again. So it's happened a couple of times already in this game, and that's a pattern the last two games up against the talented Wake Forest quarterback. Yeah, and I think it's Devin Betty again who gets his hands up. 26. The linebacker that's filling in because of the injuries to Isaiah Moore and Peyton Wilson. That's his second batted ball. And you know, when you talk to Dave Dorn, you know, one first things he said is we need to play well defensively we really need to get our hands up and in two series they've had two deflections got to be happy with that so far so more of the freshman punter out of Dalton Georgia and Thomas back at the 30 he's going to step up and it'll take a hop and it will continue to roll Right around the 25 yard line, so a 46 yard kick in the end. Larry on top, NC State leading it three to nothing. All right, here we go. Miller in motion. What, wait, is that a baby on the field? 
It looks like it, Craig. And the defensive linemen are playing peekaboo. I've never seen anything like that before. Harris now appears to be burping the baby. Uh, that's a great moment right there. Ref going to the rule book here. Well, wait a minute. Harris is off to the races. We don't need any more trick plays. Touchdown! But we could all use more ways to save. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that's got to be a long bus ride home for the defense. Switch the Geico for more ways to save. Subway has so much new, it didn't fit in our last ad. Like the new Deli-style oven roasted turkey and new hickory smoked bacon. It's the eat fresh, refresh at Subway. It's so much new, we don't even have time for this guy. But I'm Tom Brady. Oh, and they'll smash avocado, too. Dukes has twang. Does your mayo have it? Do you ask for it by name when you go out to eat? Do you display your devotion to it for all the world to see? Can it elevate your lime cilantro aioli to a level that's borderline holy? If not, you're probably using the wrong mayo. That's because only Duke's mayo has twain. It's that little southern something that elevates food from good to downright ridiculous. Get Duke's. It's got twain. Love the delicious taste of fried foods? Now you don't have to say no. Enjoy all the crunch without the calories when you create healthy, delicious meals with Cuisinart's Air Fryer Toaster Oven. Our innovative technology lets you fry food with ultra-hot air and 98% less oil for healthier results and no messy cleanup or lingering odors. With seven functions, this multitasking oven also bakes, broils, convection bakes and broils, warms and toasts, so you'll use it every day. Say yes to healthy and delicious with the Cuisinart Air Fryer Toaster Oven. Need to try it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ACC Network College Football Primetime is presented by Geico. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. And in part by new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar and Wendy's Hot and Crispy Fries. Try the best combo ever today. Wake Forest and NC State have been at it a long time. The 115th meeting of these schools. The home team has really dominated lately. NC State since 01 is 8 and 2 in Raleigh, 2 and 8 here at Wake Forest. We'll pack on top 3 to nothing. And Devin Leary with Ricky Person in the backfield. Leary will sling that, but incomplete. And intended for Thayer Thomas. Tried to get him over the middle, but that'll bring up second down and 10. Yeah, that's a nice play by Nasir Greer, who been coming back from injury and slowly playing more and more each week and you know it's interesting you know to have him over there Thomas who they like to get the ball to in some of those RPOs those run pass options and Greer up to the task Larry coming into the weekend no ACC quarterback had thrown for more touchdown passes in ACC games than him with 17 but stacked up as Ricky person and going nowhere Deion Bergen and a lot of pushing and shoving there too. Expect this one to be very physical. Yeah, and I think that Dave Clawson probably is expecting a lot of energy to come from his defense and a person a little bit frustrated and Bothroyd, who's really probably playing the best out of their defensive lineman for Wake out of the defensive lineman for Wake Forest, not really having it. Third down ten. Wolfpack already with a big hitter. They went for over 50 yards. Leary looking long again. Airs it out down the sideline, but incomplete. Overthrowing his receiver. Good pressure on the quarterback by Greer again. And as you mentioned, he's been a guy in and out of their lineup for Wake Forest. When healthy, he's a terror. Yeah, they think that he's their best player. So basically, they walk two of these guys up into the A gap. They bail this one out, but they're coming off of the right side with Greer. And you know, ultimately what happens, excuse me, he's coming off the other side. Ultimately what happens is, you know, when you walk guys up into the A gap, it it holds the interior of your offensive line, which creates opportunities on the edge. And so what happens is you can then end up getting a free runner, force Leary to throw the ball sooner, and he's not able to connect with his receiver. NC State with an outstanding kicking game. Trenton Gill with a big leg. Warren will Take the fair catch there, and that's a 44-yard kick. Field position, major reason that the Wolfpack have been so good defensively. 
you know, it really is. It, Dave Clawson said to us on 85% of their drives that they've been defending a long field, meaning 75 yards or more. And look, when you have a quarterback that doesn't turn the football over and an outstanding punter, you know, that type of thing will happen. And, you know, I think it's one of the things you kind of need to do when you're going to play an offense as explosive as Wake Forest. Tip your cap to the Wolfpack faithful. They showed up tonight in a big way. Pass going to be low and incomplete. Landing on the deck right at the feet of A.T. Perry. Perry and Roberson have been sensational. It combined for 92 catches this season and eight touchdowns. 18 touchdowns. Weird. This one just came off of Sam Hartman's hand. Funny. Just had him open, didn't make the throw, looked at his hand afterwards. Hartman has time this time. Rifles that one incomplete, but there are flags down. All over the place intended for Roberson. 918 to go here in the first three nothing NC State. Prior to the pass, holding 425 defense, 10 yard penalty, and an automatic first down. This is Donald Stewart on the near side. Shaheen Battle, the man who held him. As good as North Carolina State's defense is, if you want to say there's a weak link, it's been the ability to play man coverage with their corners and the challenge tonight against these big physical receivers that have great catch radius. You know, you, you have to be careful that you just you don't panic and start to grab them because it'll be obvious. NC State jumping on the line. That was Corey Durden a little bit early. And another penalty coming up. That's their third. Offside with contact defense five yard penalty first down. There's nothing that excites an offensive line more than when guys jump off sides. Look at the look at the excitement <laughs> by the offensive alignment. Like, it's Christmas yeah, morning. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. We got you. Let's open our gifts. Just letting you know you just jumped off sides. Back to throw Hartman. And a quick pass there for Stewart and complete for the first down at a 13 yard gain and wake on the move. Yeah, and I'd say that's the good job by Hartman because again, he's climbing in the pocket, people all around him, zone coverage. Good throw to Donald Stewart. Only Ohio State and Pitt are scoring more points per game than Wake Forest. And this offense, which is complicated, keep it on the ground here. Wayne Ruggiero, the offensive coordinator, telling us about just how good this offense has been the last three games. I mean, this is ridiculous. 643 yards a game? Yeah, I think sometimes we joke about it's video game type numbers. Those are video game type numbers. Hartman over the middle, batted up again. It's going to be picked off by the Wolfpack. A flag is down. Betty with the pick. But a flag is dropped and Clawson is clapping. If Roberson gets interfered with, which is going to end up being called. The ball he placed the spot of the foul and an automatic first down. With Devin Boykin, you see him right there. He's just too early. Get there before the ball. And you know it's interesting because Devin Boykin has really stepped up and played well. Sam Hartman's like, yeah, listen. I I saw it. I hope you saw it too. Wolfpack enjoying a terrific season. Could be truly magical. Could be headed to the ACC championship. And keep this on the ground for Turner. And stopped by Tanner Engel, the human missile, at a four yard gain. But as aggressive as a player could be in the ACC this year. He is, this is an amazing tackle, and if he doesn't make it, then Turner is off and running, and he knows it. Tanner Engel, good job of, of seeing it and firing his gun and making the play. Incomplete. And intended for Christian Turner. 
And for more on Engel, let's toss it down to Kelsey. Well, guys, I talked to him this week about that nickname he has, the Tasmanian Devil, and he said, with this offense, one of the things that I have to do is I have to slow down. I always want to keep my feet moving. But with this offense in the mesh point, you got to take your time and really see what they're doing it before you decide. He said he got the name two years ago, really liked it and stuck to it, and really worked hard to make some improvements here throughout his time at college. He said knew coming here that he was going to be around some really good football players. His words not mine he called them football geeks he said they taught him so much and he's learned a lot more got an injury Joseph is nicked up and we'll have more in a moment lots of good topics lots of good guests today it's go time of all the things that made Scrooge pout he most disliked running and striding about until he discovered the peloton tread. Sprinting and lifting sweat dripped from his head. His legs sang out like a Christmas choir. This grunt was hashtag on fire. Now Scrooge ran the holidays, no doubt. When your workout's a joy, it's a joy to work out. Five dollars. For the best kind of wings, paired with the best kind of celery sticks. Crinkle fries. Arby's, we have the meat. Get a free Thanksgiving dinner with Ibotta. With 100% cash back on turkey, potatoes, veggies, and more. Relax, dinner's covered. Because the best things in life are free. Download the Ibotta app to get your free Thanksgiving dinner. At touchofmodern.com, our curated collection of unique products is designed to surprise and intrigue. Because what is indefinable to your eye is left to your imagination. Explore the world's most unexpected items at touchofmodern.com. Recharge my brain. I fall asleep to the sound of falling rain. You need to let your Z's increase to put your mind at peace. Because greatness lies on the other side of sleep. Hi, folks. Medicare open enrollment is simple. One, call the number on your screen. Two, the agent will look up your zip code to see if you're able to eliminate co-pays and get Part C benefits like prescriptions and expanded coverage for your dental work at no extra cost. Three, they'll check if you're eligible to get money added to your Social Security check up to $1,700 a year. Call to check your zip code. I call to check my zip code. I call to eliminate co-pays. I call to get everything I deserve. I call to get money added to my Social Security check. Millions of people have trusted the Medicare coverage helpline. You can, too. Call the 800 number on your screen to check your zip code. Don't miss the deadline. Call now. It's free. Call 1-800-966-9132. That's 1-800-966-9132 now. Third and six coming up. I expect to see a bonfire or two out there on that hill at some point tonight. First quarter, 3 nothing. NC State as the temperatures are expected to be in the low 40s, upper 30s tonight. Hartman scanning the field, throwing for the corner. And a tremendous play in the end zone. Perry will haul that one in 24 yards for the touchdown. Perry turning to find the pass 24 yards for the score great catch I mean you just look at he basically and this happened last week too with A.T. Perry is kind of using that left arm to get separation I don't think there's any doubt that he pushes Tanner Engel down as he goes up and fights for the football and that's not a matchup that's going to be in Engel's favor anyway at five foot ten going against the six foot five A.T. Perry. Nick Skiba on for the extra point. He's had a great career, a historic career, and he'll drill that. Wake Forest on the board to make it 7 to 3. Hartman with his 61st touchdown pass. He has broken the school record with that one. That was remarkable because it took forever to develop. You look what happens here. He's up here. He's going to run a little hitch. And as they're running here, he's just going to adjust. And then you end up having two guys down the field 
together. I don't believe that this is the design of the play. I think it ends up taking forever like an under and go. It's an outstanding job of pass protection. And then, you know, there's contact down the field. Dave Dorn was unhappy with it. And, and Sam Hartman doesn't care about the call because he just threw a 61st career touchdown pass, which is a school record. And A.T. Perry. And these and that's just kind of the, the personality of these Wake Forest wide receivers. They're big and at the moment of truth. They just go fight for the ball. Man, did he fight too to hang on and control the football? That's his 11th touchdown pass reception. Knight taking a couple of hits, brings it out close to the 30 yard line, a 21 yard return for Van Knight. And another scuffle away from the football. A lot of talking going on between these two. I think emotions running very high in a game of this importance. It's the magnitude of the game. It's an in-state rival, and, and that's not good to see Bam Knight limping off. He's such a, you know, crucial part of their run game, their best all-around back. But yeah, Dave, this has been chippy, and I don't think we typically see that out of, you know, Wake Forest football teams. Some of the extra stuff, but we've seen some of it already, you know, on both sides. Tanner Ingles said this week watching Devin Leary it's like watching an artist at work he's been that good dumps it off short and got the pass complete and got that one across the 45 Trent Penix the fullback and a gain of 17 yards and a first down yeah Penix just scrapes across the formation as they fake the run and I think he's a really interesting player he's a former tailback that because of the depth at the running back position at NC State he's essentially moved to tight end can do a lot of things with him because of his versatility heart and soul guy said this week we are a really special team Leary on the move and complete to Rooks on the near side he'll pick up seven on that pass it's a good job by Devin Leary they're trying to work a double move to Carter it's not there he looks backside to a Mezzi. That's not there. Comes back off of it and finds a completion to Rooks. It's a good job of having poise when the shot play isn't there. Second down eight. Six and a half to go here in the first. Phoenix again, but no. There's Ricky Person there and Tyler Williams with the stop on the play and he's going to lose three. Yeah, and I think what we've seen so far is we've seen a pretty active defensive line for Wake Forest as Tyler Williams makes that play. And if they can hang in there in the run game, that's going to allow Wake Forest to kind of protect their secondary a bit more, which I know they would like to do on this third and 11. Leary to put it in the air, looking downfield. Airs it out long and incomplete. And intended for Porter Rooks, but a long, long pass and a flag. And take a look. I think I think Emeka Mezzi gets held by the corner. Well, the crowd in full throat booing this call, but a flag down with 5.49 to go in the first. A Mezzi gets held at the top of the screen. If that's what it is, it's the right call. If they call this on Anderson, well, that's a bad call. interference, defense, 15 yard penalty, and an automatic first down. Automatic first down. So here, here's the top, okay? That's a Mezzi right there. He gets held. There's no doubt about that. I mean, he pulls him down. That's defensive holding. Now, that's not the call. I think they end up calling Anderson 45 because of where they were putting the flag. And if they called it on that, then that's that's why Dave Clawson is taking his hat off and throwing it and, and is furious. Football spotted at the 41-yard line. First down 10 
for the Wolfpack. Trailing seven to three. And Leary keeping that dives ahead to the 40. He picks up one yard. On a stop by Kendron Wayman. Even Deacons defeated NC State when they last met here in 2019, 44 to 10. It's just the second time both of these teams come in nationally ranked. Last time, 1992, NC State was number 13, Wake was number 25. Pack won that game, 42 to 14. That was in Raleigh. And Dave, these are two really good football teams. You know, solid all the way around for NC State, both sides of the ball. And obviously an incredible offense for Wake Forest. Pass started to the sideline and dragged out. Mezzi, who has 45 receptions on the season, we saw him become the number one pass catcher in NC State history earlier this year against Boston College. And I think that the size and athleticism of these receivers for North Carolina State against these corners for Wake Forest, that is the biggest matchup advantage for North Carolina State. Third down three. From the 34. And a handoff for person straight on. Not much room to operate there, although just enough as he got four. And he picks up a first down. You know, when you look at the backs for NC State, Bam Knight's really good. Ricky Person has been a very good, tough runner throughout his time. At North Carolina State, and they have a good offensive line, especially the left side. It's been a bit of a mystery that they haven't run the ball more effectively in recent weeks. Yeah, they certainly can. There he's going to throw and hit his running back. And that person is held by Masterson on the far sideline. And lose two. You know, the beginning of the year, we talked to Dave Torn, and he said, look, our, our left side of our offensive line is nasty. Look at the first five games, 171 yards rushing. And, you know, the last four, not able to get to the century mark. And what's interesting is that they're big, they're strong, they have a good scheme, but it just, it hasn't worked. And I don't know if it's mainly because people have committed to stop it, but well, offensively, they've been able to survive because of the play of the quarterback. Going to go short. It's Person again. And a slip. He picks up three, but could have had more. Could have had a lot more, and I'm not sure why Ricky Person was even thinking about cutting back. Look at this screen. They get it. It's set up beautifully. Mezzi gets enough of Masterson, and if he just stay outside, he's probably going to be fine as Roberts trying to get to the perimeter, but... Definitely left some yards right there. Sure did. Big call here. Third down nine for the pack. Trying to continue this drive. Looks in motion. Very pressure on him. Got the pass away, but incomplete as he took a hit. Intended for Riley. Couldn't get it to him to bring up fourth down. That's a good job by Rondell Bothroyd. On the left side of your screen, just taking the best offensive lineman for NC State and running him into Devin Leary. Listen, that's Iki Iquanu, who's 6'4, 320 pounds at least. And Bothroyd just ran him back into with the quarterback. Done on for a 46 yard attempt. Does have a career 65 yarder. Puts the leg into this, and it is good. He drills it. So done with the field goal, second one of the contest for the Wolfpack. 7-6 game here late in the first. And Lyle Hemphill has got to be thrilled with the fact that he's only given up six points because the ball has moved. You see Dave Clawson, he's unhappy about the penalty. And well, I think defensively, at this point with the way NC State's moved the football, and they've got to be happy with the way the defense is kind of hanging in there, especially in the passing game. I don't think they they feel like they have to beat Georgia defensively. Dave Clawson told us as much. 
because of their offense, you don't have to do that. If you can keep teams to kicking field goals, I think Dave Clawson feels like his group will be able to score enough points that the three won't hurt him. Yep, a week ago they scored 55 and lost. 58-55 at Chapel Hill. And the kick will be drilled through the end zone. Wake Forest up by one. You can catch a women's college basketball doubleheader tomorrow afternoon. It starts at noon Eastern in a carrier dome. That'll be Notre Dame and Syracuse. And then coming up at 2 o'clock, Florida against number five, NC State. NC State looking to bounce back after a nine point home defeat to number one South Carolina to open the season this past Tuesday. College basketball underway. I was at Duke last night to see the Blue Devils take on Army. Duke loaded again, final season for Coach K in his legendary career. Ellison trying to run off the right. And a strong carry to pick up nine yards. I mean, just camping out in the state of North Carolina, just calling sports. I mean, who's got? I mean, who's got it better than you, Dave? There's a gentleman at the door of the booth tonight, wondering when I was going to pay my property taxes. <laughs> Second down and one. On the ground again, Ellison, and a first down. Gavin Van with the stop, but moving the sticks and a three-yard gain. NC State with a defense ranked number six in FBS, number 10 in rushing defense. Hartman to throw. Pump fake. Now throws short. Another one very short. Done that a couple of times at the feet of A.T. Perry incomplete. Yeah, Sam Hartman looks a little bit unsettled. You know, by my count, has missed three throws tonight. As you see his numbers, just two for seven. I think three of them are balls that he should have completed and quite honestly throws that that he's made all season long. I do think he's got to settle down just a bit. Incomplete again over the middle this time he wanted Perry once again but nothing doing brings up third down Yeah, make it four because he has Perry and I think Dave Clawson have a look a little bit saying, hey, just settle down. You know, we're we're okay. A lot of football to be played, and the quarterback has had a ton of poise all season long. He's having a hard time finding a rhythm. I've been dropping back, now moving his feet. Trying to run it, looking for the stick. Out of bounds he goes, but a terrific run there for 15. Sam Hartman moving the chains. That's a will free safety blitz to Hartman's right, and it doesn't get home. And so what happens here? The will free safety blitz, and ultimately what happens? He's able to to escape it and get away from it and pick up the first down. It's a nice play by Hartman. Trying to keep him moving, looking for a receiver. Throws incomplete. That one got to Whitehart, the tight end. Stuck it in there for 13 yards. Player down. For NC State, that is Daniel Joseph. Player. Couple of men down, in fact, along with Van. Evan Van and Joseph both in some pain right now. With a minute 12 left in the first. And Wake Forest up 7 to 6. And Ingle a little bit dinged up, too. It's that kind of night. And you see, you know, here's Ingle. And you said, I mean, just the. Human heat seeking missile. He goes flying in there and kind of hurts himself. And then you see Joseph, Daniel Joseph, and David Van both kind of hobbled. And I will tell you, David Van's a guy that's really shown up, you know, watching NC State defensively. Xavier Jackson, you know, banged up. More opportunity for Van, and he's been really good and looks like he's kind of. Grabbing something on that right leg as he limps off the field. And then Joseph, who had to come off earlier, he's banged up. And that is not what Dave Doran needs for this defense. For more NC State, let's toss it down to Kelsey. 
Well, guys, something NC State definitely does not want is any more defensive injuries because they've just been hit time after time this year. They lost Peyton Wilson very early on, and then Isaiah Moore, another one of not just their defensive leaders, but also their captains on defense. And I was talking to their defensive coordinator, Coach Gibson, before the game on the field just about all the injuries and the consistency this defense has still had. And I said, if you've had defenses in the past that had sustained this many injuries, would they have been able to prove what these guys have and he said he doesn't think so it's the way they play for each other he says he coaches them really hard and they respond well and he definitely pointed out a few names on defense especially Drake Thomas he said early in the offseason Drake Thomas was the one that was really popping to him and and you can see why guys and Tony Gibson said at times he's taking bubble gum duct tape and prayer <laughs> might be the case tonight with this offense Moving forward, Hartman down to the 30-yard line and a five-yard scamper. You know, I, I think there's an element of truth to that from Tony Gibson because of the caliber of players that they lost. That being said, I think they've replaced talent with talent in many instances where those injuries have happened. They continue to play defense at such a high level. Ellison really going nowhere on that carry. Terrell Dawkins making sure it end of the first is coming up. You might have expected a more high flying affair offensively. Sam Hartman has had a difficult first quarter. And NC State has been held to a pair of field goals in this all important game tonight here in Winston Salem. End of the first. And Wake Forest will carry a one. How about this for Wake Forest, their first first quarter with less than 100 yards total offense since October the 9th when they had 74 against Syracuse. It was a rocky first quarter for Hartman by his standards. They did have a touchdown pass, and a flag is down. Full start, number 62, offense. Devontae Gordon, the right tackle for Wake. A big freshman, 6'5", 305. And you see Dave Clawson, like, hands on his knees already. Like, guys, we're, like, this isn't us. You know, we, we were penalized a week ago. That's just not, that's not how he coaches them. It's not been the makeup of this program as... You know they, they've always done a good job of not turning the football over and then not hurting themselves with careless penalties. They said last week against Carolina we had a 50 man line up and that's going to be darted on the play to Williams. Williams trying for the end zone takes a hit just shy. He rolls into the end zone almost got in 34 yards before Powell stopped him to prevent a touchdown and it's first and goal. Yeah, really good route by Keyshawn Williams. He gets open and then Hartman delivers the ball between the one and the three and now they're rolling. Down to the one, Ellison, he is in the end zone. Justice Ellison, he will score. Wake Forest from one yard out. They did not wait long, did they? And the Demon Deacons are on the board again here at home. Well, Dave, it's like, you know, you call them out for having a, a slow first quarter, and they're like, all right, then we'll score right away to start the second. <laughs> right. That's what we're going to do. And, you know, I think it probably is just a matter of time. Dave Clawson has a chance to talk to his quarterback between quarters and say, settle down. We're going to be fine. Make the throws, and, and we'll get this going. Nick Skiba. And the extra points. So 10 plays, 75 yards. Big pass play that got them close. Yeah, it was hard to see Williams just running kind of a simple out route, but does an excellent job. You see him coming back to the football. And then once that happened, just good run after the catch and then just punching it in. It's a good job of getting movement up front by the offensive line. Blake Whitehart doing a good job of the tight end position of not allowing penetration. And Justice Ellison able to get in there so you know, Wake Forest you know, it's funny I think it goes to kind of what our expectations are for him Dave I mean here we are outside of 14 and a half minutes in the second quarter kind of commenting on their struggles but they've already scored 14. 
on pace to smash the school scoring record getting over 500 yards per game in total offense that's number six nationally coming into play tonight so wait to kick off good way to stay warm this evening on top 14 to 6. So Devin Leary will be moments away from getting a chance to answer. Van Knight into the corner, right over the pylon. Let's see what the call is here. The receiver gave a fair catch signal. Did give a fair catch. Well, he placed the 25 yard line, first down. So we'll come out to the 25. Well, it's a good thing he gave a fair catch signal because they had him not, and he clearly does multiple times. Well, next Friday, the ACC Network will have a college basketball quadruple header starting with women's games at 2 and 4 Eastern, followed by Towson and Pitt at 6, then at 8. Cameron Indoor, Coach K, and his number nine Duke Blue Devils. All games right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. One app, one tap. First and ten for the Wolfpack. And a little pitch here into the backfield. On the move is Zone of the Night. Damn Knight rolls out, chased out by Nick Anderson, a pick up 12 yards. And a first down. Can you see how scary this can be if you're a defender? Look at Iki Iquandu, 79 out in space. That is a big boy running down the field. If you're a secondary player, you're like, listen, I just want to string this along and have this back go out of bounds. All-America candidate. You know, he's playing left tackle here. Projects, as you see, Mel Kuyper's ranking is, is the number one guard coming out. Really talented football player. And yeah, his position, certainly one of the best in America. Larry throwing short Thomas. Thomas gets away from one tackler, breaking free, and a good gain. Mustafa will wrap him up. Let's get out of Kelsey. Well, guys, I got to talk with Grant Gibson about Icky, who you guys are talking about. And he said, seeing this guy up close, he stopped and he said, it is amazing. I'm not exaggerating. Amazing the things that he does. He said, hardly ever when you're watching film, do the guys get really excited when you say, okay, we've got an O line play. It's Icky. They said the team absolutely goes crazy when you get to see some of what he does on film. Brother Rosita is a Notre Dame linebacker, so great talent in the family. Devin Carter in motion. On a play action. Very on the roll. He'll hit Thomas again. Thomas, who came in with 38 receptions, six touchdowns. Both Thayer brothers enjoying standout seasons for NC State. Younger brother Drake, a linebacker. And that's a one yard pickup. NC State's run a number of these where they fake the run and then they're. They're running a slide or they're scraping across the formation. We've seen it with Penix. We've seen it with Thomas where they're getting that that flat runner coming from the other end of the formation. They're trying to sneak it through because of the fast flow of Wake Forest defense. Second down nine. Pass started and complete. That one caught by Lassane. He'll gain five yards on the quick hitter. And Larry didn't catch that snap clean, and then looked like he was awkwardly trying to get a grip of the football. That's why I think it was a little bit low, forced the receiver to the ground, and now because of that, they're faced with a, a third down. Twenty-five touchdown passes, only been picked off three times. He has been so efficient. Thomas back in looked like he was shaken up on the previous play. Larry trying to get free. He cannot escape. Bothroyd again. Rondell Bothroyd. We've been calling his name a lot early in this game, Tim. He's been really good. He just puts on an inside pass move here. He's going to start up the field and he's going to come up underneath. And this inside move, he just ends up getting home. Just a bad job of passing it off by Derek Easton and Bryson Spees. The right guard and right tackle. And Excuse me, is actually Timothy McKay at right tackle and Bothroyd definitely having an impact on this game early. So the pack has to punt on fourth down and 11, trailing 14 to 6. Wait to get it back here. Taylor Moore standing back at the 10 yard line. 
McGill with one of the best legs in all of college football and a fair catch at the 11 42 yard punts Wake Forest back with the football. Hello I'm Mike Lindell the CEO of my pillow cancel culture has not only affected myself and my pillow but millions of you out there. My employees and I want to personally thank each and every one of you for all of your support. At MyPillow, we not only have pillows, but we have hundreds of products, including my new slippers, bathrobes, sleepwear, and my new beds. We're offering the best gifts ever for the best prices ever. For example, we have this exclusive offer on the standard size My Pillows, regularly $69.98, now only $19.98 with your promo code. We also have the queen size My Pillows, regularly $79.98, now only $24.98 with your promo code. And we have the king size, regularly $89.98, now only $29.98 with your promo code. So go to MyPillow.com now and use the promo code on your screen or call the 1-800 number below to receive this exclusive offer. Get ready. Something's cooking. What is the plan? Is this what you wanted? This is the way. Do you listen to the TV on high volume or have trouble hearing conversations? Then you would benefit from hearing aids. Don't waste thousands on expensive hearing aids when you can get Nano's revolutionary technology for just $297. Don't be fooled by higher priced hearing aids. The CIC Recharge is a true hearing aid, not an amplifier. With rechargeable technology many customers say is superior to more expensive models. Call now and get not one, but two Nano hearing aids for just $297. $97. Plus, we'll add a portable charging case and ship your order absolutely free. The CIC Recharge has a tiny in-the-ear canal design that is nearly invisible. Why keep missing out on important conversations or waste thousands of dollars? Call and get two CIC Recharge hearing aids for only $297 and free shipping. 800-721-7089. Again, that's 800-721-7089. ESPN, home of the college football postseason. Welcome home. And welcome to Truist Field here at Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Number 16, NC State against number 12, Wake Forest. NC State at 7-2. And, and Wake at 8-1. Wake 5-0 in the Atlantic Division. NC State is 4-1. Tried for a breakaway there, but... That was Jones tying him up in a seven yard gain and Turner almost got free. He almost snuck through there because Sam Hartman you know he held that mesh for so long and then he was able to get in front of Levi Jones that helps spring Turner. Second down three. Hand off again Ellison. Christian Turner with the carry there. And a stop by Drake Thomas after a two yard pickup. And Leary getting a little work done. Devin Leary, as they work on the left foot and some tape work. Third down and short. And flags down. 9.49 to go in the second. Full start. Number two. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. It's on the receiver, Stewart, but another penalty. And these are the things I think that, that Dave Clawson is, is wondering like, who is this team? It was an issue last week, you know, for an illegal procedure because. They're not lined up formation correct then a false start which now creates a much more difficult third down against a very good defense and it happens from a fifth year player. Hartman hit as he threw it an incomplete he took a knock. Serious pressure brought by the Wolfpack and in particular by Tyler Baker Williams. And Tyler Baker Williams just unblocked top of the screen. 
bringing a lot of pressure and Hartman I'm not sure knew that it was coming because it didn't I didn't get the sense that he was playing with the type of urgency that you would with that type of blitz coming and not a fortunate that the ball came out and it wasn't you know, knocked loose prior to the ball being thrown third time three and out for Wake Forest so more to punt. Thomas back at the 45 yard line. High kick will drive him back. Gonna make an effort here. Still up. And finally dragged down by Blake Whitehart. Able to take him down in coverage. First and 10 coming up. Football is the game of life and it brings the community together. White, black, boys, girls. Flag, tackle. Football can revive communities. Anybody can play. That family value, that brotherhood is everything. It's really what all it's about is just having a good time and being able to play. There's never been a better time to play. Hey, Coach Prime. I think you got what it takes to wear the Aflac. It's style, charisma, and a smile that's 21 out of 10. Aflac. You know Aflac can help keep unexpected health care costs from ruining someone's finances. Check out this coverage. You still got Aflac. it, Coach. You still got it. Aflac. I never lost it. Yeah. Aflac. You see that coverage? With that wingspan, I see why you got more rings than a cell phone. There's always room for one more. Yeah. Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover at Aflac.com. Zaxby's Boneless Wings Meal couldn't possibly get any better. I stand corrected. The Great 8 Boneless Wings Meal with your choice of sauce, just $7.99. Only at Zaxby's. And see Ghostbusters Afterlife exclusively in movie theaters. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for cable when it's half the cost for Fubo TV? Get all the channels you want with all the entertainment you love for the price that cable can't beat. Try free at FuboTV.com. Smile Direct Club. These are Smile Direct Club aligners. They can turn a smile like this into a smile like this in as little as four to six months for less than $3 a day. Choose Smile. Get started for free at SmileDirectClub.com. It's time! Presenting the Lawnmower 4.0! Featuring skin safe technology and it's waterproof! Go to Manscaped.com today. Wake Forest defensively decided to come play tonight. They've done an excellent job putting pressure on Devin Leary. And Stout in the run game. Tyler Williams there. And Bothroyd rushing the passer. And you know, they can be deep, disruptive in the front the way they have been so far. And it looks like a different Wake Forest defense than we've seen at earlier points in this year. And so they've been either great were really bad, never average. Well, tonight they've been great so far. Down to Kelsey with more on the defense. Well, I got to talk to their captain, Jasir Taylor, a little bit about what happened last week and them trying to learn from that loss, guys. And he said they put an extra time in the film room all week this week, just doing what they could to try and come back. He said they took it personally when they got out of that game. Coach Hemhill, their defensive coordinator, says early in the week it was so serious. It was quiet. It felt like a morgue. But these guys said that that extra time together, the leadership that they have, builds extra chemistry. And for them, it seems to be paying off right now. NC State picks up the first down on the dart to Rooks. Broke a tackle and made the first. So Devin Leary who had gone 228 pass attempts without an interception before finally throwing one on a Hail Mary against FSU on the run here and he will throw that out of bounds and pressure brought here by Wake again that was Luke Masterson and again it's pressure on Leary and you know there, there's not an elite pass rusher you know, they have Boogie Basham in the past and he was a matchup problem for a lot of teams this is a collective effort defensively and, and Lyle Hemphill kind of just talking about how hard this group has worked and how much they care about it and it shows you know with the way they're playing tonight empty backfield 
on second down 10 for the pack. Very rifling that one. And it is going to be picked off. Intercepted. Intercepted by J.J. Roberts. Man, was he quick with that step onto the sideline. And on the intercepted an by Wake Forest. What a great play by J.J. Roberts. He just undercuts this ball to C.J. Riley. And I think his feet are in bounds. And, you know, Wake has been so banged up at corner what an outstanding play they've been so banged up at corner played a bunch of different guys all over the place in the secondary and that is one heck of a play by Roberts it's a great catch and to keep the foot in by JJ Roberts the freshman 5'11 195 you were just talking about how good their defense has been so first down and 10 at the 49 yard line. Just as Ellison in at the back. Hartman on his feet following blockers straight ahead as he dives and picks up five yards. You know, we we're listening to Miles Fox on the defensive side for Wake this week, and he said, What we cannot do is let North Carolina beat us twice. He said, That would be unacceptable. This game is a test of character. And I think because they have a, a veteran group. Oh, it's going to be picked off. And it was tipped. And picked off by the Wolfpack and by Battle. And a flag is down, but Shaheem Battle with the interception. So trading picks, but a flag is down. 7.51 to go before halftime. Zelda plays an interception. After the interception and during the return, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 99 intercepting team, 15 yard penalty, first down. So, unsportsmanlike on Daniel Joseph after the pick. Well, it's been uncharacteristic of both teams turning the football over first way for us, and now NC State with a big one to get the football back. So what I'm saying is people like options. I mean, you take Geico. You, you can call them anytime you feel like saving money. It don't matter, day or night. Use your computer, your smartphone, your tablet, whatever. The point is, you have options. Ah, oh, how convenient. Oi, crab cakes. What are you looking at? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Fuel your grind with Gatorade's proven formula and the right blend of electrolytes to help you on your journey to greatness. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and take tailgating very seriously. Game day and beyond, grab a football-ready big bow box. Team, we've waited all year for this. But game day isn't about wins or losses. It's about grills and smokers, burgers and wings, buffalo sauces and secret rubs. Do we save at Food Lion for the home field advantage? Do they have just what we need to go big on game day? Then walk out there with your heads held high and your sliders held higher. Because this is our home. And that's our Food Lion. What happened to us? We hustle and grind without resting our mind. We need to sleep. You need to lay down in bed to focus your head. Sleep. Because greatness lies on the other side of sleep. You have something I want. There are things out there you can't imagine. Well, just 30 seconds between the interceptions. I'm not sure what Daniel Joseph was thinking about. That is an awful penalty. It's a bad penalty, but also a huge break for NC State just to get the football back after turning it over. Very lofting one deep, but that's going to be out. Intended for C.J. Riley to bring up second down 
and 10 for the Wolfpack. So tw two quick interceptions in this one, 14 to six Wake Forest. You get the sense, I, at least I'm getting the sense that it's a really big football game. And I think that we've seen some uncharacteristic things from both of these teams yes. in a big game. They Definitely. don't know the magnitude of this and their chances of being an ACC champ if you win this game. I think we've seen it so far. And you are holding a hammer if you win this game. And the Atlantic is going to be dropped by Porter Rooks. Right off the hands. He had a catch to make. Yeah, and I think that's kind of a continuation of what I'm talking about. It's it's an RPO. Leary makes a great dis, you know read. It's a good throw. It's a little bit back shoulder, but I mean it's in the frame of the receiver's body. It's on Rooks' you know right shoulder, and if he catches that football, not only does he have a first down, he's got room to run. Sure did. Third and ten. Devin Leary trying to light him up. And a long throw and caught that one out of bounds. So incomplete. Mecca Mezzi has been pretty quiet in this game. They've done good work on the really talented receiver. Yeah, and it's a good job of coverage and the ball's thrown out of bounds. And here's what's interesting North Carolina State has faced a ton of third and longs this season. And they've done a pretty good job of, of getting a completion. And even when they wouldn't pick up the first down, you know, they maybe pick up eight yards on third and ten. Then they punt the ball with their great punter and flip the field. That's one of the reasons we've talked about this NC State team defending a long field. Well, it's a nice job there of, of forcing an incompletion and now creating a situation with decent field position. Flag down, Gil with a booming Prior punt for the flag. Full start, number 85, offense. Five yard penalty, fourth down. So the sixth penalty for the Wolfpack. Wake Forest with three, and in past years, they'd usually have a zero up there by this point in the game. So Gill forced to back up at about his six or seven. Taylor Warren will have a chance here. It's a low punt. And take a bounce and keep on rolling past the 30 yard line. And down around the 26 43 yard kick been a number of tips in this game Tim and Dave Doran talked about his defense needing to play well. And part of that is the defensive line in the front getting their hands up and it was the bomb Betty twice. Then it was the pick by or the tip by Joseph that led to the pick and. Sam Hartman's not the biggest guy with the design of the offense for Wake Forest. He's throwing the ball really close to the line of scrimmage oftentimes. And when that happens, it is difficult to find throwing lanes. It's one of the reasons why he's off to a unusually slow start. Four for 12, 84 yards, does have a touchdown and the interception. Will rifle this one to the sideline, tiptoeing out A.T. Perry. Came in with 42 receptions. And add another one, and that'll pick up 10. So, a first down, they move the chains. Wake Forest looking for a long, sustained drive. Hartman with the handoff again in that mesh to Turner. We're talking with Wake Forest offensive coordinator Warren Ruggiero, and you asked him why this offense isn't copied he had a very interesting response he said we had some rough years here with wakey leaks everybody knew everything we were doing we no longer have visitors at practice because of that going to fire that one incomplete he said we don't show our stuff at clinics to other coaches yeah and i think that you know part of it has been there's been very little staff turnover they've developed this offense it's their own which is Really unique because you know football is a copycat league. People copying things from every level of football, but this is their own, and they're not sharing it with other people. But it certainly works. I'm gonna hit as he threw it and incomplete. Once again, good pressure. Tyler Baker Williams, who's having a nice night. And he was coming six and a half minutes to go in the second. 
Yeah, and then, you know, pressure again. It's Tyler Baker Williams from the top of the screen. He's unblocked because they're bringing pressure from the other side that's going to occupy the back. And I think once again, Wake Forest is fortunate because I don't think that Sam Hartman knew that he was going to have an unblocked defender. I really don't think he knew. And you're fortunate that, that he's not there a second sooner where that ball can come out before he throws it. Morrow with a long one here and a fair catch by Thomas. There is a flag down. Wake on top 14 6. Running into the kicker. So that's going to be five yards. Running into the kicker, number 31, defense. Penalties declined. First down. They needed 10, so we get five back there. That's the right call. I think sometimes on these running into the kicker, roughing the kicker, it's difficult. But, you know, Vi Jones, who's been a really He's been a really good special teams player at times. Now he's got a starting role in the defense, and he is so athletic. We saw him first, you know, in person. Yeah. The job he did containing Malik Cunningham, which was remarkable. Out of then, USC. What a great story, too. Oh, I mean, just, you know, and, and really, you know, it was kind of, kind of buried in a deep linebacker room with Peyton Wilson and Isaiah Moore and Drake Thomas, but because of injuries, getting this opportunity and, it was a, a really highly touted recruit coming out of uh, high school, number number four ranked uh, linebacker in his class, and played a little bit at USC. But had you know uh, his father played and, and his family was living in the North Carolina area, and ends up at NC State and's done a nice job. There he's starting to drive from the 15-yard line and complete to Devin Carter. It could be an absolute monster on big plays, tied up by Greer, a four-yard pickup. A guy that you know contemplated being out of football for a while. Yeah, which you know is a shame, and goes to show you just kind of how to change the scenery and some coaches that believe in you, and how that can change how you know what your experience is in college football. And it's it's always good to see guys kind of respond and then have the success that we've seen. Second down, six. Knight with a carry, doubling back the other way, heading for the sideline. He's dragged down across the thirty. And we'll pick up a first down. Greer with the stop, but that's an 11 yard rumble. Yeah, it's a really good job of just winding this player. thing back because he kind of ends up, you know, running through contact early in this. See there, you know, on Miles Fox got a hand on him at the line of scrimmage. It's a good run. A player injured, Trent Pinnix, and we'll be back in a moment. Morning already? Taco Bell's toasted breakfast burritos will get you out of bed. With fluffy eggs, crispy bacon, and a melted three cheese blend, all toasted to morning perfection. You're not dreaming, they're real. Only at Taco Bell. At touchofmodern.com, our expertly curated products are never ordinary, never mundane, and never in a million years what you'd expect to see or imagined you'd ever have. Check it all out at touchofmodern.com. It's the season of giving, so stay tuned and find out how you can get two free rolls of Alien Tape through this limited time holiday offer. Alien Tape is the double-sided removable tape that makes hanging holiday lights fast and easy. And when you're done, it peels right off. No sticky residue. Repair decorations that didn't survive storage in a flash. Stick window candles firmly in place. Secure your holiday rugs in place without damage to floors. Hang this heavy wreath in a flash. No nails or screws. Look, Alien Tape hangs tight, even in windy conditions. Just peel and stick. Holiday stockings are hung in a flash, and it comes right off without any damage. Make sure your holiday packages arrive at the right address. And look, even a jet wash won't take them down. Alien Tape is perfect for hanging holiday signs, even on glass. And to remove it, just give it a twist, and it comes right off no sticky residue. Alien Tape makes holiday decorating fast and easy. And remember, Alien Tape is the double-sided, removable, washable, and reusable tape you'll love. You'll use Alien Tape everywhere. Use it in the bathroom. It's perfect for the kitchen. Use it indoors. Use it outdoors. There are hundreds, maybe even thousands of uses for Alien Tape. 
Get Alien Tapes limited time TV offer. Now here's your chance to order. Call or go online to get your roll of the incredible Alien Tape for the low, low price of just $19.99 plus shipping and processing. But wait, order today and you can get two additional rolls of Alien Tape absolutely free. That's right, for a limited time, you can get three rolls of Alien Tape for one low price. That's an amazing amount of Alien Tape. Here's how to order. To order, call 1-800-285-7984. That's 1-800-285-7984 or go to tryalientape.com. So call 1-800-285-7984 or order online at tryalientape.com. Huddle crew here coming up on the PNC Bank halftime report. Halftime reaction to the good one behind us. A wild finish in Tallahassee, and we cover all the ACC scores from today. Back to you, David Tim. Jordan, thank you very much. NC State with the football. Trent Penix went out, re-aggravating a shoulder injury. He's being evaluated. First down and 10. Got to run the football, keeping it on the ground here. And they brought Lassane, the wide receiver, for the carry, and he went six. To bring up second down and four. 14 to six, Wake. Yeah, I think there's some confusion there with Lassane at the end of that. Dave Clawson seemed to think that there was a fumble. Some of the Wake players thought there was a fumble, and Lassane was fighting for the football afterwards. And spotted at the 36. On second down, Leary rolling. And will rifle that one out of bounds. And again, took a seat, took a hit. Both quarterbacks have seen a lot of pressure. Smenda, Ryan Smenda, came up to say hello. You're right about Smenda. He gets there. That's a big shot on Leary, and they even were moving the pocket. I tell you, I, I've been really impressed with both fronts on the defensive side for these teams. Just creating disruption in the run game, creating disruption in the passing game, getting after the quarterback, and Smenda with a big hit. Third and four. And that one off the hands and incomplete intended for Tootle. Christopher Tootle can't make the play. The 6'4 freshman. Uh, Travion Red, if he didn't get a piece of it, he certainly distracted Tootle. Getting that hand in there at the last second, just a little stick route by Tootle, who a really athletic player, good route runner, and Red just able to kind of trust it enough, undercut it, and, and distract Tootle enough to force him to drop. So on fourth and four, fourth punt of the night for Trenton Gill, one of the best in the business. Warren back. And a fair catch as he lurches forward on a 37-yard kick. Let's look back on what we have seen so far tonight. Well, we thought we'd see strength versus strength, and you know, A.T. Perry showed his strength with this initial touchdown, but Wake Forest defense yeah, been up to the task. What a good job of getting after Larry, stopping the run, and, you know, Wake Forest got another opportunity early in the second quarter with a big completion that led to the Ellison score. And then again, it's been the Wake defense coming up with a turnover. So not exactly what we expected, but, but definitely good, two good teams putting a pretty good fight out. Ellison straight on, Eagle with the stop. Hartman only five of 15. And it has been Tough sledding for him tonight. Coming off 398 yards against North Carolina, his fifth straight 300 yard game. Set the school record for touchdown passes tonight. Looking long again, got it away, and a hit there, and it's going to be complete to Perry. First down on a gain of 34 yards. Well, it's a great throw considering the pressure that Hartman was under, and then it's an awesome catch by A.T. Perry, who... Really on the previous play, a completed catch is under further review. You see the pressure that Hartman was under by Jones get there, and then A.T. Perry just does a nice job. He's running the post, falls a little bit behind him, but you run your route, but when the ball's in the air, all bets are off. Go get the football, and A.T. Perry does that, and I think he comes down with this one. Going to check to see if it was complete, if it was a legal catch under review. 
Look at that athleticism to go back and get it and then the contact as he went down. I'm with you. That's a catch. Well, I, you know, I think so, but I was actually looking at that. First, you see the catch radius. I think this ball is moving. I think it maybe hits the ground while it's moving right there. You know, initial glance, I thought that he had it because I thought right there he pinned it to his body. Look at it here. I think it's loose. And I think it's touching the football, it's touching the ground as he rolls over. I think they're going to call this an incomplete pass. Let's check out this, this is, angle. This is the look, I think. Right here, as he rolls to his right, I don't think he's controlling that football. And right there, yes. I think it hits the ground yep. and it's moving, and that's an incomplete pass. I think you're right. It was a good angle. That last one, so under review, that's our best angle. Originally ruled complete on the field for 34 yards, but it is being looked at as we speak with 352. You know, when I saw it live, it, you know, you just always, maybe it's just, I've become accustomed to seeing these tough catches from these Wake Forest receivers. They're so big and long, they've got amazing catch radiuses, and you, know, you certainly saw that on display by Perry, and. I think it was enough contact through the football to force it loose. And yeah, Wake already knows that they're already backing up. After further review, the receiver did not have firm control of the ball when it touched the ground. Incomplete pass. It'll be third down at the 31-yard line. I think it's a good call. Crowd doesn't like it, but another look in our best angle. Yeah, I, I just think that, you know, Pitts... Kind of punches at the football. It's a nice play by Pitts to do that, and it's not being, it's not controlled by Perry when it hits the ground. And, and the officials eventually got it right. So it brings up third down and seven. Wake Forest on top here in the second quarter with 3:52 to go before halftime. 14 to six. We'll see what Sam Hartman cooks up here. 6'1", 210-pounder, native of North Carolina, back to throw, good protection, throws that one low, and going to be caught by Roberson, made a nice play on it for 12, and that'll move the chain. It's a really good job by Sam Hardman. They check a play. There's an adjustment and a check by North Carolina State defensively, so Sam Hardman's got to go somewhere else with the football, finds him a nice job. Wants to go fast, it's Morin. He shucks one tackler. Made some extra yards. Finally, Engel with the stop, but another first down and 22 yards. And Morin's been a nice find playing outside. I think they envisioned him as a slot receiver, but when he's played outside the numbers, he's done a nice job, and it's a good run after the catch by Morin. Yeah, after getting through battle. Timeout, North Carolina State. NC State first the half. looking to slow him down. We'll take a timeout. 14 to 6 and Wake Forest on the move. They look like they're in their best offensive groove of the night. Yeah, and I think because the quarterback's in a rhythm, right? I mean, it's you said it earlier, Dave, 5 for 15, you know, and that's just really uncharacteristic of Sam Hartman. I mean, you, they're usually so efficient, and he's usually so accurate. So, you know, between the batted balls and, and missed throws, been able to find a completion. Good job off of the check and then finding Warren outside. And you see, you know, last game was against North Carolina was Sam Hartman's only game of the season under 50%. And you know, prior to that, you know, so if you combine that with tonight, it's 45%. The first eight games of the season, you know, completing around 65% of his passes. So, yeah, it's been a little bit different last week and then the start of tonight. And it's been a combination of things, not just missed throws, not just batted balls. Both of those things playing a factor. First and 10 for the Demon Deacons. Going to take a shot at this one for the end zone. And it's broken up incomplete. He wanted Perry, came close, but Battle broke it up. And I think Battle does an awesome job of reading the eyes and hands of Perry. Watch, he never looks back for the football. 
But when Perry looks up for the ball, that's when he knows Ooh. to try to get that right arm in there. Listen, he looks like he's maybe got some hand fighting going on prior to the ball getting there with A.T. Perry's right arm, but it's pretty well done by battle. Hardman to throw again, short over the middle and almost intercepted, tipped and incomplete. That was off A.T. Perry. And oh, so close to be picked off again. I, I have to say, I, I said it earlier, the things that we're not used to seeing these teams do drops penalties you know it's hard to chalk it up to something other than it's a big game and everyone knows it and has been talking about it being such a big game yeah definitely a very different feel in the air here in Winston-Salem not talking about the plummeting temperatures either Taking another shot down that sideline, but it's going to be incomplete. Once again, unleashing A.T. Perry, but Aiden White was with him to bring up fourth down. Yeah, and to me, this is really bad by Sam Hartman. It's a blitz by NC State. They do a beautiful job of picking it up. And then you have one-on-one -on -one coverage with a six-foot-five receiver against a six-foot defensive back, and the ball's thrown way out of bounds. Like that, that's a wasted play and it's something that they typically don't do is like you let your big receivers at least fight for the football those 50 50 balls are really 80 20 in your favor Skiba from 53 yards gets it up there and it came back it hit the post it hit the bar he was oh so close to drilling it Skiba with a miss from 53 I mean, there, there's the doink, the double doink, and then there's oh. just like the just doink right off the crossbar. Inches. I mean, they say a game of inches. I think Dave Clawson is wondering, like, what is going on right now? Like, my quarterback is throwing the ball out of bounds, not giving receivers chance. My kicker is hitting the crossbar. He's had an amazing career kicking here at Wake Forest. Yeah, he's on his way to becoming the most accurate kicker in NCAA history. Just his second miss of the season. And lowering that helmet, Ricky Person. And Dave Doran taking a look. And yes, on the miss. I mean, the thrill of victory, agony of defeat type, you know, on the sidelines. Well, I can't believe it. Dave Doran is thrilled about it. And let's even get his offense going. Second down six, got time here. About two and a half to go. He slings that pass and complete, and it's going to be fumbled. Wake Forest looking for the end zone. Trevion Red down that sideline, inside the five. A fumble recovery, a huge turnover. Take a look. Carter's fighting for extra yards. And that ball's out. Field is a completed catch. Followed by a fumble. First down. And the scoop up by Red. Terrific play by the senior out of Martinsville, Maryland. Well, here's what's crazy. We talk about Wake Forest and their struggles defensively. They had 10 recovered fumbles coming into this game. I mean, Dave Doran even said to us, he's like, I, I don't know if they're just so good at punching that the football that that's why they maybe aren't tackling better, but that's the 11th fumble recovery this season. That's incredible. And it's against a team that doesn't fumble it. And now it's created an amazing field position. First and goal at the 5 to 11 to go before halftime. Wade trying to punch it in, trying to take advantage of a giant turnover. Hartman going to carry it to the end zone. Touchdown. Sam Hartman punches it in. The turnover and immediately six points. And Wake Forest sitting pretty at 20 to 6 with 205 left in the half. I mean, we didn't think it would be the defense that was going to spark Wake Forest, but it certainly has been. Sam Hartman looks a little hobbled, but he is certainly hanging in there tough and putting up a fight. 
So Skiba, who just missed one from 53, on for the extra point. And right through there to make it 21 to 6. And turnovers playing a very active role in this one. Here's the fumble. It certainly is. It, it's Roberts. This as he's tackling Carter, doing an excellent job of raking at the ball, which creates the opportunity for Red. And then, you know, here's Tanner Engel. Here's what's interesting: is he ends up being, you know, st you know, stuck out there because he's thinks he's defending the pass. You know, with that long mesh, he thinks that there's a chance Sam Hartman's going to pull it out and throw it. And I think Hartman was thinking of throwing it. And that holds Engel, who's a really aggressive player, in pass coverage, which creates the opportunity for Sam Hartman to just follow Turner the back and run the football. And So responsible for 37 touchdowns, so many good quarterbacks in this league, but he is nudged ahead of Kenny Pickett for total quarterback touchdowns. Rushing for one here, his ninth rushing touchdown. Yeah, and let's just, and I've said this all along, there's been great quarterback play in the ACC, not just this year, but in past years. Kenny Pickett, everyone's been talking about him as, you know, a Heisman candidate, and rightfully so. Well, Sam Hartman's been right there with him. Bam Knight finds an opening. He's across the 40, across midfield, and they're going to catch him. Finally, they push him out after a giant run back. And what an answer that is. That's 72 yards. Zion Keith saving a touchdown. Just an amazing job of the return team as well. Look at the block on the right side of your screen to get Bam Knight going. And, you know, the special teams, I, you know, we, we've talked so much about how solid NC State has been all the way around. We've kind of left out the fact that they're special teams. We've talked about Trent and Gill, but the return game has been really good also. A whistle here timeout. and a timeout. So Wake will take one after a scintillating run on a kickoff return by Zahneman Bam Knight, 72 yards. Man, you talk about an answer. Oh, a big time answer and it started to feel like all right well this is swinging on nc state a little bit here you think about the drop by rooks and then the fumble by carter and you know then the quick score and then you get too far behind on this wake you know defense yeah i just want you to look at the block that we end up getting here on this return you know no more wedges but <laughs> <laughs> There are some big collisions in kickoff return, and Bam Knight's going to get the credit for it, but that's a really good job of the return team of creating some running lanes for Bam Knight. But Dave, you're right about the answer, and they needed it, I think, because the offense has, has struggled. And, you know, we showed this in the open. Look at the, the magnitude of this football game. You know, in terms of the percentage of, of chances to win because of, you know, what lies ahead and, and how big this game is in the Atlantic. Well, I know it's not a championship game onto itself, but it's starting to feel like one. Leary wants to throw for the end zone. Some contact there. What a catch there in the corner and a touchdown. Outstanding grab by Emezi. 28 yards and a touchdown. And in a blink of an eye, the Wolfpack are back in the end zone. You're right, blink of an eye. It's big time return, and Amezi, big strong receiver, catches the football, right foot in, mm. left foot in. That's good in the pros, and I'll tell you right now, I mentioned it earlier, the matchup advantage that I believe is in the biggest favor for NC State is those receivers, Carter and Amezi, against the corners for Wake Forest. Extra point is good. NC State ferocious. And this is some grab. Great throw, no doubt. But look at the grab by Amezi, who's made a few in his career. He certainly has. And it's one of the reasons I was so critical of Hartman on the throw he threw out of bounds. When you get these big, strong, physical receivers, they don't have to look open. You just want to throw the ball 
at them. Get it in their vicinity and let them fight for the football. So Devin Leary, who's been overlooked by many in the national media, just continues to have a standout season. He acts like he could care less. But another touchdown pass for Leary. I mean, came in to this weekend having thrown more touchdown passes in the ACC, in ACC games than any other quarterback. And it's a list of terrific quarterbacks. Yeah, and I think because there's been so much good quarterback play in the conference that, you know, maybe it was because of the start, you know, to the season that NC State had. Yeah, I mean, Leary wasn't getting the same type of love nationally that some of the other guys were. And look, maybe it was because of the preseason, you know, expectations around someone like Sam Howell, but the two guys we're getting a chance to watch tonight have been every bit as good as pretty much anyone that you could see play on Saturdays this season. And they are both finding their groove here at the tail end of the first half, 21-13. Hardman takes over again with that mesh. He's going to rifle this one and broken up at the 40-yard line. He wanted Roberson, who's been his top target, came in with 50 catches for the season, but incomplete. And there's a lot of contact there because of that long mesh. I think it makes it hard for defenders who are driving on those inside slants that, you know, to, to drive early. And, you know, right up here, see, there's a lot of contact right there prior to the throw. And a little bit surprised there wasn't a call. Keeping it on the ground with Ellison. Betty with the pop. Betty, a guy, the defensive coordinator, Tony Gibson, said he just makes plays. He's made plenty of them this evening. That gains one, bringing up third down and nine. Minute 20 to go. A little surprised that Dave Dorn didn't take a timeout right there. With two left, third and long. And obviously, you know, good understanding of the situation by Dave Clawson because he's going to be willing to let it run out. Time out here, 101 to go. Timeout. NC State. NC State takes, takes one there. 30 second timeout. And the second timeout, 21 to 13. Wake Forest with the lead. We came on the air as we have so many times this season talking about two outstanding quarterbacks regardless of the matchup. And now both of those guys are living up to that hype. Yeah, they're both really good. They're, they're accurate. They're good decision makers. And I think what's interesting, and we've seen this with Leary, just because the game maybe doesn't start the way that you would expect, which has certainly been the case for Hartman, they're good enough to pull themselves out of it. And I can just tell you firsthand as a quarterback, when the game starts poorly and you feel like you're playing uphill, it's hard to kind of pull yourself out of that hole. And look, as you see, you know, Sam Hartman's numbers, seven for 22, obviously not, you know, typical for him. He's good enough and this offense is good enough to kind of get back on track. And we've seen Leary do that in games. I think we saw him have the quietest, you know, 300 plus yard game with a couple of touchdowns a couple of weeks ago. Sure did. Been a hard hitting emotional game. We anticipated that in a game like this. Just over a minute to go before halftime. Hartman looking downfield. Here they come again, and they're going to drag him down. Daniel Joseph, the Penn State transfer. Going to lose 11 yards on the sack. Well, Joseph, who had the, the penalty earlier, you know, he ends up being, and here he is right here. That's actually Corey Durden. He ends up coming, looping around. And really what North Carolina State has done an amazing job of is using Levi Jones to twist, getting him involved. And, you know, the, the different twists and stunts that North Carolina State has run has created opportunities for everybody else. We've seen it with Davin Van seen it with Corey Durden Daniel Joseph benefited from it tonight and 
you know now North Carolina State feels like they've got all kinds of momentum it's going to get the football back with them out around a minute left and really I you know had Dave Doran taken a timeout earlier prior to that third down where he eventually took the timeout probably would have an extra 30 35 seconds so more back to punt goal post set is back and we'll watch this punt and a fair catch so some time to do something here 56 seconds 53 yard kick and a 21 to 13 lead for Wake Forest and you're right you can feel the momentum jumping on the side of the Wolfpack here a 72 yard kick return by Zonovan Bam Knight that'll do it and then a great catch in the end zone by a and that has silenced the crowd here certainly for Wake at the moment 56 seconds to go here in the first half Leary with that strong arm buying himself some time on the move across the 40 and steps out and picks up 12 on that scamper and a first down that's a big play by Leary and typically you know two minute drives that are successful are either aided by a quarterback run or a penalty and there's a big quarterback run by Leary you know, I think they feel like he can run more be, be a more effective runner I think it was evidence right there. NC State has been really good stealing points at the end of the first half all season long. That one's going to be dumped off and a completed pass racing out will be Ricky Person. And 42 seconds to go. Well, and when you, you know, you mentioned the momentum and it certainly feels like it it was all on Wake Forest's side after the, the fumble and score. But then the, the Bam Knight kickoff return, the ensuing Amezi play, you know, for the touchdown, feels like it's flipped and it feels like NC State's playing with a lot of confidence right now. Brooks, after the completed pass, he steps out. Eight yard pickup there. Christopher Dunn, the kicker, has hit one from 65 in his career. Yeah, and because NC State's done a good job now obviously we need to pick up the first down here on third down but you know assuming they can do that they've left themselves enough time you know where they don't have to just work the sideline even with no timeouts third down one Larry wants to throw again and complete another completed pass he hits Devin Carter once again moving those chains 16 yards on that play it's a great job by Leary because they're working a corner flat combination probably with the expectation of throwing the flat but the corner opens up much bigger gain also gets out of bounds and then same thing holds true now 33 seconds even with no timeouts you can't stop the clock obviously for them to spot the ball if you get a first down or getting out of bounds but throwing the ball in the middle of the field is still an option Larry, the kid out of New Jersey, back to throw again. Throw him to the end zone. Touchdown, NC State, as he hits Devin Carter, 21 yards. Boy, they are tough to stop at the end of a half. That's a really impressive two-minute drive with no timeouts because they were used on the defensive side. Devin Carter running the post route. It's basically, you know, a pin combination. You know, a, a post or a, a hook with an in. And you know, Leary does a good job because he's got some pressure coming from Nasir Greer on the left side of playing on time, getting the ball out accurately to Carter for the score. Done for the point after, and he drills it. So this has become a one point game with 28 seconds to go. It's become the game we anticipated. Well, it certainly has, and NC State. He's doing it in all phases because it started really with special teams when you thought maybe the game could get away from them. It was a Bam Knight kickoff return that led to the Amezi score. And then defensively stepping up, getting to Sam Hartman, obviously getting the ball back with enough time for Devin Leary to do some work and find Devin Carter for the score. Five plays. And into the end zone again. 
And that was quick. And 28 seconds before the break. That's the game we anticipated, certainly the game we hoped for. And if we mention that Devin Leary should be talked about with some of these <laughs> other quarterbacks in the conference, yeah. wow. Yes. Going to have to have a talk with my friends at the Davy O'Brien <laughs> committee, the family, as Morin tries to run this back. He looks for an opening. He's off to the races across the 40 and dragged down as he got across the 50 yard line. And it was Trenton Gill, the punter, who stopped that. Come on, Taylor Marie can't get caught by the, the kickoff guy, the punter. And 44 yards. It's a great return. Not enough speed to take it the distance, but certainly creates an opportunity with two timeouts left. Well, he had an opportunity to maybe take it to the house. That's a big play by Trenton Gill, who's had an amazing year kicking off and punting. Make that stop because we got a chance to keep Wake out of the end zone now, but certainly an opportunity for Wake with the ball past midfield. And a flag down. Looks like Corey Durden moving up front. 19 seconds to go. One point game. Try to snap offside. Number 45 defense entering the neutral zone, causing an offensive player to react. Five yard penalty, first down. It's kind of a shame that uh, Devontae Gordon, you know, jumped for Wake from Wake Forest perspective because if he doesn't jump, then it's a free play that gets to continue and, you know, for Hartman. And then at that point, you have free reign to be a little more aggressive with the football thrown it downfield. First down five. Hartman short with a pass. And a crunching hit shy of the 30-yard line. It was Blake Whitehart, the tight end, who took a pop there, but 13 yards on the game. And a first down, first and Wake will take a timeout. Time so they are down to their last one with 12 seconds to go. And I think for Wake Forest, it'd be interesting to see, they're kind of right on the cusp of Skiba's range. So, you know, at that point, with a timeout, you know, in just 12 seconds left, you know, I think try to find something in the middle of the field and use another timeout to see if you can get one opportunity to throw the ball into the end zone to one of your big receivers. Probably not doing it from the 31. And you're trying to pick up enough where you're closer to field goal range for Skiba. Take a shot into the end zone. You know, take the timeout if it's in inbounds. Then take a shot into the end zone. If you don't get it, then you're in Skiba's range for him to kick a field goal to go into the half. Career long 49, this season 46. He missed one from 53 off the crossbar just moments ago. First down and 10 for Hartman and Wake Forest. Trying to get more points up there right before the half. And this giant game in the ACC. On the ground again, it's Christian Turner. Running back position thinned out for Wake. Of course, with Kenneth Walker transferring to Forest. Michigan State, where he's become a star. And and Neil Smith's out. injury last week. They do not expect that to be long term, but not playing tonight because of a lower leg injury. So Skiba coming out. This is the 53 yard miss and doinking right off the crossbar. You know, I think this that sequence there ends up being a really smart one by Dave Clawson. You know, the NC State lines up and, and they're playing two man hard hard coverage to throw the football against. And, you know, if that throw, you know, ends up being incomplete. Then now you're in a situation where, you know, you. You know, you're kind of forced to maybe run the very next play because you want to make sure you're not giving up the field goal. And so Dave Clawson says, hey, I'm not going to take that risk. We're going to run it, get into Skiba's range, and use the timeout. This in his range, 45-yarder coming up. He has hit 90% in his career. He has a chance to be the all-time number one percentage-wise in college football, and he is going to make sure this one is right through. And that's the end of the first half. Wake Forest with a field goal to make it 24 to 20. 
24 points scored in the last 205 of the first half by these two teams. <laughs> you were wondering, does NC State have enough time to score with no timeouts? It's like, yeah, they do. And you know what else? Wake Forest had enough time as well. Yes. This, I think, is turning into maybe more of what we thought we might see offensively. NC State is going to get the football to start the second half. And that was fun. With a kickoff return, Bam Knight got him going. And then Devin Leary with a, a, a great throw to a Mezzi in the defense responding, getting the sack, getting the football back. And then it was Carter for the score. So, you know, for an offense that kind of was, you know, unable to get into the end zone, that kickoff return seemed to change everything. Well, Bam Knight's going to try it again. He went 72 yards the last time. He's across the 30. Watch him go again. 40, 30, looking for the end zone, tiptoeing. He is in for the touchdown. You've got to be kidding me. 100 yards. Bam is right. Goodness gracious. Tim, they let him get loose again. They absolutely did, and now, you know, can we just continue that from the final 205? <laughs> wow. And it's the same kickoff return. You know, oftentimes you have a middle return, left return, you know, various returns. That was the same exact return. I guess if it's not, not broke, don't fix it. That's two plays for him, 172 yards worth of returns. And that's in a matter of minutes, if not seconds for him. Incredible. And NC State catapults into the lead, 26 to 24. I thought he may run out of gas at the end there. He obviously picked up some good blocks, but was able to just step through a tackle. And I always find it interesting when teams have their starting tailback as their kickoff returner. You know, because obviously there's a lot of responsibility on, you know, on your starting running back. But you're doing it for a reason. It's because the guy's special, and Bam Knight just showed why. Done on for the point after. NC State shot out of a cannon. Bam Knight out of Bailey, North Carolina. Watch this again. Well, it's a good kick into the end zone. You just see everybody kind of picking, picking things up here. I mean, and, and when that happens, and then the effort down the field, what happens is you end up getting a two for one. And then it's Bam Knight with enough speed, able to kind of just step through the Mustafa tackle at the end. Man, did it open up for him again, and he was gone. Mustafa, only man who had a shot at the end, but no. 21 points in the last two minutes for the Wolfpack. Which is just an absolute explosion. And you think about, did you say it was in kickoff return yards? 172 72 yards. <laughs> for one guy. I mean, remarkable. So the Wolfpack to kick off. And that'll be a touchback. So we'll see if the Demon Deacons have an answer to that to number seven who has been absolutely spectacular two times tonight. Can we look at him too. He's like barely breathing heavily like yeah I took the elevator up to the and I was breathing <laughs> heavy from taking the elevator. That's kind of unfair. It's just <laughs> smiling and like yeah no like big a deal. Walk in the park Dude, on a Sunday a, afternoon you know something yards like here we go. So I can do that again. Typically, wow. guys, are, you know, got the oxygen tank going. You know, the not Bam Knight. Aptly named, nicknamed, rifled and batted down, and that continues to happen tonight. Devin Bam again got the hands up, and it's the the push that they're getting. You know, defensively, there's Van at the bottom of the screen. I mentioned him earlier, just driving. The right tackle back, it's Gordon, and then he's just able to get his arm up. Tough play on the side and incomplete. He's out of bounds. A.T. Perry. Tariq Pitts made sure to come up and knock him. 
They're down in 10. A little bit strange to see, you know, Perry not have a little more awareness of where he was on the sideline, stepped out of bounds before that ball got there. Sam Hartman on third down. Broke the school record against North Carolina, responsible for seven touchdowns, five of those passing. Needs another star turn in this one. Boy, that's a tough pass and a very good catch on the play made by Chapman, the tight end, for 11 as they move the chains. That's well, good job of pass protection to get one of those twists up front from the North Carolina State front. Wake does a great job of picking up. Type window throw. Good catch by Moore. Center of the line, and Hartman will go down, tied up by Vi Jones. They expected him to be a very big factor in this game, and that's turning out to be true. He's been really impressive, just the ability to make plays, and like Daniel, Daniel Joseph once again. Yeah, he's Daniel Joseph down. It's happened a couple of times in this game. We're going to have to take the break. 14.06 to go in the third. You rip and tear your old statements and bills and simply toss those old bottles of pills. But thieves use this information to steal your identity. Don't be a victim. Get the ID Police, the new ink roller that encrypts all your old documents. So before you throw it out, just roll it on and your information is gone. Look, thieves use your trash to get credit cards in your name. Then you're responsible for the bills. But ID Police permanently prints a unique encryption graphic that makes it impossible to read through, both on the front and through the back. Even if the paper is held up to the light and it works on all forms of paper, matte or glossy, paper shredders are slow and always jam. But roll with ID Police and you're in control. Watch again. Here's a bank statement with your name and account number. Now, one easy roll and all your personal information is blocked. Name and address? Blocked. Credit card number? Blocked. Phone, electricity, and gas bill? Now they're all safe to toss in the trash. So relax. Even your medical information is safe with the ID police. And did you know those receipts have information too? So carry ID police with you and have peace of mind. Perfect for professionals always on the go. So block it out before you throw it out and thwart any thief with the ID police. Order now and get your ID police for as low as $9.99 and get free shipping too. That's right, free shipping. This offer is not available on Amazon. So call or click now to get your ID police for as low as $9.99 with free shipping. Don't wait. Call now. To order your special offer, ID Police, call 1-800-504-9074. That's 1-800-504-9074. Call or visit at idpolice.com. So call 1-800-504-9074 now. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. The wildest adventure of the year has arrived. For all subscribers, this is special. Is it? it is. Disney's Jungle Cruise, rated PG-13. Start streaming today. Well, we'll give you a look at Daniel Joseph's injury as he walks away. The big 6'3", 265-pounder. Here he is coming here, and he's kind of at the end of this. Kind of goes into the hip of Van, and looked like a shoulder was bothering him the way he was hanging his arm, but. It's hard to tell what, what it was. Second and seven. Hartman zips the pass and completes a parry, trying to break away, but can't. A flag is down. Pitts will stop him, but Perry with the reception, a flag dropped. And plenty of those tonight. 13.52 to go in the third. NC State with a spectacular 100 yard kickoff return for touchdown by. Zonovan Van Knight is taking the lead. Roughness, number 10 defense. 15 yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down. That was on the free safety. Tanner Engel who's going to plead his case. You know and it's interesting. It, you know targeting issues were. Were kind of a thing for him. Early in his career. I think he's adjusted the way he's played but. He hasn't been been less aggressive and so you know, I think it's helped him stay in the field and it's really helped this defense because he's such a good tackler. It's 
we've certainly seen tonight. Moves it up to the 35 of the Wolfpack. Uh, first down 10, Hartman. Fakes the throw. Ellison. And can't break free. I'll pick up one officially. So this, here's Tanner Engel here. This is the last play. And you know, that's just basically a collision with Taylor Morin. I mean, it's almost like a, like they accidentally ran into each other, not that looking at each other. Seemed like an unfair penalty, and that one is going to be incomplete. A.T. Perry, the intended well, receiver, never got to him, and brings up third down. I like, Tim Hartman, I think, is kind of like, hey, I'm expecting you to run in there full speed. Seemed like A.T. Perry kind of throttled down a little bit, and that's why they weren't able to connect. He's just 10 of 28. One touchdown, one interception. Third down, four for eight. It has third and nine here. Dropping back. Throwing long. Watch Perry over the shoulder, but can't make the play. And the coverage by Pitts again. Well, it's zero blitz, and it gets picked up as well as you can pick it up. And Sam Hartman does exactly what he should do, which is give Perry a chance to make a play on the ball. And that's just strange. He's usually so great at finding, adjusting, and tracking the football. Yep. The fourth and nine, they're going to go for it here. I think they're kind of in no man's land here. You're not going to punt right here, I don't think, out of field goal range. Harmon drops again. Another heave. His receiver wins it. Stewart with the catch and a first down. First and goal that goes for 31. It's an awesome job of Sam Hartman seeing it. It's a corner blitz, which creates an opportunity down the field. It's really impressive. Officials timeout for an injured player. And Terrell Dawkins, the defensive end, gripping his foot. We've got to take the break. 12.50 to go in the third. On my travels across the country, I came across this house with water dripping from the ceiling. You never know when something like this will happen. So let the Geico Insurance Agency help you with homeowners insurance and protect yourself from things like fire, theft, or in this case, water damage. Now, if I had to guess, I'd say somewhere upstairs there's a broken pipe. Geico. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance at geico.com. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and take tailgating very seriously. Game day and beyond, grab a football-ready big bow box. Here's a direct question. How long are you planning on keeping your new smile? Yeah, that's why Smile Direct Club has their lifetime smile guarantee. Get a doctor-directed smile you love, guaranteed for life, your life. Choose smile, choose direct. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, the CEO of MyPillow. Cancel culture has not only affected myself and MyPillow, but millions of you out there. My employees and I want to personally thank each and every one of you for all of your support. At MyPillow, we not only have pillows, but we have hundreds of products, including my new slippers, bathrobes, sleepwear, and my new beds. We're offering the best gifts ever for the best prices ever. For example, we have this exclusive offer on the standard size my pillows, regularly $69.98, now only $19.98 with your promo code. We also have the queen size my pillows, regularly $79.98, now only $24.98 with your promo code. And we have the king size, regularly $89.98, now only $29.98 with your promo code. So go to MyPillow.com now and use the promo code on your screen or call the 1-800 number below to receive this exclusive offer. Dawkins walking off, but what a huge moment for Wake moments ago. Tim on fourth and nine. Yeah, it's fourth and nine, and the corner blitz is telegraphed. Here comes the corner blitz, but with where Aiden White is lined up, that gives away that you're running a corner pressure. And then it's Stewart just running a go route versus 
man-to-man -man coverage with no help because of that corner blitz and the other pressure. And then Hartman does what you need to do, which is just put it into the vicinity of these big receivers. The 6'4 Stewart got to slow down a bit, but is able to just go up and get the football. And as you said, huge conversion on fourth and nine. So first and goal for the Demon Deacons. Trying to get right back on the scoreboard. And retake the lead here against NC State. In this giant game in the Atlantic. And the handoff and getting inside the five yard line is Ellison. He'll pick up four. And Sam Hartman just sacrificing his body as well because after he hands this football off, he's trying to shield the backside defender from running the play down from behind. Yep. Look, that's a quarterback block, Dave. I I'm counting that as a quarterback block. Okay? Oh, you're very proud right? of it. Yeah, well, I mean, look at the pickup. Are you kidding me? Yep. Good job, Hartman. Second and goal. And out of a Wildcat, Ellison. And a man in motion, Stewart. Ellison's going to take it. And nothing doing there as he tried to duck inside. Stopped by Drake Thomas. You saw that coming. That game's only one yard. And Actually loses a yard. You know, and that kind of that wildcat look has typically been reserved for Christian Bill Smith, who, you know, as we said earlier, is out of this contest after the injury last week. And you know, we've seen you know NC State be a team that's hard to run the football against, certainly hard to run run into the end zone against. And, I think Wake Forest probably going to have to find a way through the air. Bill Smith missing because of a lower leg injury. Here's Hartman, plenty of time, now rolling to the end zone. And got it in there for a touchdown. He got Chapman, his tight end. A five yard touchdown pass. It's a great catch by Brandon Chapman. You know, the tight ends aren't used a whole lot. Brandon Chapman, just four catches on the season, and comes up with a huge one here. As Sam Hartman kind of gets stuck holding the football, doesn't know where to go, escapes to his right, and Chapman does a good job of going down for the ball. Brandon Chapman, his first touchdown reception of the season. And the Demon Deacons back in front. Dick Skiba with the extra points. So that makes it 31 to 27, 11.07 left in the third. Yeah, Sam Hartman's going to start looking to his left, but it's Chapman who's just going to end up leaking out and then working for his quarterback. You look at Hartman's eyes. He's looking left, doesn't like it. And as he comes back to the right, Chapman just says, hey, I see my quarterback in trouble. I'm going to work with him. And, you know, Hartman's able to kind of find a throwing lane because Levi Jones, I thought, had a chance to get his hand on the ball. And, Good adjustment by Chapman. 12 plays, 75 yards. Bill Smith relegated to cheerleader, but happy about this. <laughs> and multiple touchdown passes in eight consecutive games now for Sam Hartman. That is the school record. He has set many. And he's, you know, there's a lot of credit given to this offense, and rightfully so from the standpoint of their scheme. It's creative, it's new, no one else is doing it. It's hard to stop. But you need guys that can deliver in this offense. And I, they, they obviously recruit and develop great receivers, but they've gotten quarterbacks to play really well in this system, to make good decisions and make accurate throws. Nope. And Hartman's done They're gonna that. go short, they want no part of Van Knight as he was standing on the goal line. He's always dangerous and tonight he has been incredible. So a short kick to stay away from number seven who's done so much damage this evening. One run back 100 yards for a touchdown another 72 yards. Yes. You know unfortunately for Wake Forest it's it's one kick too late. You know in terms of making that decision. But I would expect that, that that's what we see for the rest of the night. On Wake Forest kickoffs. So first down 10 for the Wolfpack at the 25 yard line. Trailing 31 to 27. Leary really got hot at the tail end of the first half. He'll zip this one to a Mezzi, but nothing doing there. Taylor came up and dropped him for a loss. 
They ran this play earlier. It's a wide receiver screen where they get Iki Aquano out on the edge to try to block the corner. Jasir Taylor has seen it before. He said, listen, I, I'm not going to let a 300 pound, 320 pound left tackle come out and get me. I'm going to go attack this. Makes a nice tackle. Second and long for Leary. Wants to throw again and again. Emezi on a near side. Taylor there again, and that'll go for seven. I mean, a bit of a shove, but uh, not a big time shove. Third down and four. Timeout, Wake Forest. Wake Forest will take They're a timeout. The Their first of the second half. Dave Clawson taking one here. 10:04 left in the third. Lots of good topics. Lots of good guests today. It's go time. On a suspicious fansville by Dr. Pepper. Howdy, Logan. Wonder if you can help me out with some. Sure, sure. Looking for a couple of goalposts. Went missing after the big win last night. What? That's awful. Who would steal a goalpost? Say, that is a nice new swing set you got there. Oh, this old thing. It makes the boy happy, I guess. Interesting design. Oh, yeah, it's Scandinavian. You know what? You should check the streakers across the street. They have a very suspicious new antenna. Thanks for the tip. Anytime, Sheriff. Dr. Pepper, the one fans deserve. Love the delicious taste of fried foods? Now you don't have to say no. Enjoy all the crunch without the calories when you create healthy, delicious meals with Cuisinart's Air Fryer Toaster Oven. Our innovative technology lets you fry food with ultra-hot air and 98% less oil for healthier results and no messy cleanup or lingering odors. With seven functions, this multitasking oven also bakes, broils, convection bakes and broils, warms and toasts, so you'll use it every day. Say yes to healthy and delicious with the Cuisinart Air Fryer Toaster Oven. The Solo Stove Bonfire is the hottest new reason to get outside. With its signature 360 airflow design, firewood gets just the right amount of oxygen. And since it's easy to light, it gets going fast. It's America's favorite smokeless fire pit for a reason. Bonfire is made for when those good moments become lasting memories. Save $10 using promo code TV10 at solostove.com. Do you listen to the TV on high volume or have trouble hearing conversations? Then you would benefit from hearing aids. Don't waste thousands on expensive hearing aids when you can get Nano's revolutionary technology for just $297. Don't be fooled by higher priced hearing aids. The CIC Recharge is a true hearing aid, not an amplifier. With rechargeable technology many customers say is superior to more expensive models. Call now and get not one, but two Nano hearing aids for just $297. $97. Plus, we'll add a portable charging case and ship your order absolutely free. The CIC Recharge has a tiny in-the-ear canal design that is nearly invisible. Why keep missing out on important conversations or waste thousands of dollars? Call and get two CIC Recharge hearing aids for only $297 and free shipping. 800-721-7089. Again, that's 800-721-7089. We welcome you back to the ACC Network Football, presented by Geico, our primetime evening here in Winston-Salem. And they've caused some pretty heated moments ago. You know, he's been a little animated in this game, you know, more so than we've seen him in the past. But I think he knows, you know, to use a timeout on a substitution issue defensively, at this point in a, a game that's probably going to go down to the wire, can really come back to haunt you. Feels like it. Brooks in motion. Leary and incomplete off Rooks hands. Water Rooks could not make the play covered by Evan Slocum to free safety. That's good tight coverage by Slocum trying to get a little bit of a pick or a rub and Slocum does a nice job of kind of being patient fighting through it and because of the tight coverage the ball is a little high and away for Porter Rooks. So Gill on to punt. His 20 punts inside the 20 over the last four games. Been a real weapon 
all season long for the Wolfpack. Warren backing up around the 20 and a fair catch at the 19. That's a 50 yard punt. Now, next week, we travel back to the great city of Boston, Massachusetts. It's Florida State taking on BC, and my partner, I am delighted to say, will be inducted into the Boston College Hall of Fame. Congratulations. Tim Hasselbeck and great great honor to you. Well, thank you uh, for that. I had a feeling when you said hey where we're going to be next week that you guys had some type of some type of prank, you know, set up for well, that, me. That's next week definitely. Yeah, we'll have sure. something. Yeah. No, it's very cool. I'm excited, you know, obviously huge win for Florida State today. Excited to see them and Boston College new life with Phil Jakovic back at quarterback, so I'm excited to be there for that week. I remember what a star he is at quarterback. Get another one in the ACC incomplete on the sideline intended for Perry couldn't make the play a, a weird night for Sam Hartman I, Dave I think so as well I mean those are throws you don't see it with the look on his face I mean look at these numbers 12 to 32 just, I mean he's just usually so accurate and you know, Dave Clawson talking about missing you know, leaving missing throws when he was going into halftime that's certainly been the case well another one that can't be handled here and again it was Perry he tried to hit but incomplete I don't think he ever has this but we should look at it again just a little spot route he's gonna sit down good accurate throw on this one and see him just turn his head so soon and now he never possesses that football Boy, Perry has been targeted 19 times. He does have a touchdown. He lines up wide left on third and 10. That's crazy for a guy that's been as productive as he's been. Flushed out of there. Hartman on the move again. Will fling this one. He got it off, and it's Perry again. And complete. Finally tied up by Battle. It's like nine yards. And brings up fourth and one. Yeah, I, I thought that almost like because he had the drop, he didn't trust him. He goes down to the ground with this one. There was a chance he was going to be able to stay up. Officials timeout for an injured player. Another injured player down for NC State. 15 to go here in the third. This has happened frequently tonight. That is Corey Durden who's down. Corey, the graduate on a Newberry, Florida. FSU transfer, also proud father of a two year old son, Jackson. And on his back at the moment. Good to see him on his feet, but a little bit hobbled. Wake Forest in front, 31 to 27, in this huge game in the Atlantic. You know, just to go back to Perry, he's not been targeted 20 times, and he's got four receptions. And you know, for a guy, you know, coming into the season that already had 42 catches and 10 touchdowns, it's just kind of surprising to see. You know, the lack of you know, his ability to track the football, catch it, and, and Sam Hartman's ability to, to get it to him at times. It, that is not something that I think that we could have forecasted, Dave, when you just you know, saw them play the season. Great guest list for the Mannings tonight. You've reached Peyton and Eli. Leave a message. It's Pacino. And I want to be in the show. Foot by foot, we're going to measure Peyton's head. Watch Peyton and Eli. You never know who will drop by. Well, look at this. I mean, we've got pulling out all the old photos of me. You know, the Manning cast has been a lot of fun, Dave. I don't know how much you've gotten a chance to catch it, but I think you've seen the personality of, of both Eli and Peyton. And I think the funny thing is that well, not everyone knew Peyton was such a people knew Peyton was a jokester. Maybe they didn't know Eli was kind of as funny and as much of a you know, jokester I, as he is. That's the thing and, that's popped for me. What a great sense of humor he has. Yeah, he's been excellent. Both of them. It make, makes sense. On the run outside, it's person trying to find that corner and chased out by 
Mustafa, but a 16 yard gain for Ricky Person. Yeah, I think he's been, both been hilarious. It's been gold for broadcasting. Yeah, I, I, Eli was always notorious for like pretty good pranks on guys. You know, like put the, the blue dye and, and guys like shoes and gloves so they, you know, they they take them off and next thing you know they look like Smurfs. I mean, just, he was always up to something. First down 10. And he's hit. Football is loose. He got stripped. And down on the deck, NC State jumping on top. Looked like Nasheen Davis was able to strip it. And they're going to lose seven on that play. Officials time out for an injured player. Another injured player down. Take a look. Yeah, and they're trying to work a double move. That's why you see that Stay little down. shoulder shrug by Leary and. You know, NC State fortunate to come up with that football because it's just kind of laying on the ground there as you know, after it came loose from Leary. Sir Greer, who's really been in and out of that lineup, it's such a key man for Wake Forest on the defensive side. He's made a few plays tonight, and you know, he's been on a, a pitch count, snap count, if you will, and. Which is to see if they can get him back. Second and 18. Blowed one out for Houston, who just came into the game in a running back spot. And knocked out by Luke Masterson. They'll get 10 back on that short pass play. Houston, different skill set than the other backs that we see for NC State, but well, really good in the passing game. Has a ton of speed, and you see they try to get him on the perimeter and leave him in again on this third and long. On third down, Leary one for seven. Third and nine, Thomas on the move. Leary in the pocket, rifles this one, and it's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Nick Anderson. Really on the field for the interception. First down. Anderson, who had four picks as a freshman last year, with a diving interception here. It's a great play by the former walk on Thomas is just running the seam. He actually turns Anderson around. But the ball shouldn't be thrown there and, and I'm not sure the type of throw you know I mean it's almost like Thomas is going to look towards the corner. Leary was almost throwing a seam that he thought was going to sit down. And, you know now this. NC State offense that have been so good at protecting the football. You see, had three turnovers just tonight. So Hartman taking over the football in first and ten with a lead of 31 to 27. Has time to throw, throwing deep, and that's going to be picked off. So they trade interceptions. Intercepted Real by the Wolfpack and Tyler Baker Williams. Boy, this is a crazy game. Two quarterbacks who have been tremendous taking care of the football so, this year. So here's what happens. He's got a post to the left, and after the mesh, he's looking for that. When the safety rotates over the top, he's looking for Marin here. What happens is Marin wins. The ball just isn't thrown far enough. Safety vacates the middle of the field, and Hardman just doesn't get it out there enough for Marin, which allows for it to be undercut by Tyler Baker Williams. And getting the dog bone. After that pick. <laughs> That's the second time it's turnover bang. Another turnover right behind it. So both quarterbacks have been intercepted two times tonight. Leary's going to keep on throwing. And complete pass. That one to Lassane who's been kind of a favorite target in this game. The flag is down. 704 to go in the third. Ineligible player downfield, number 54, offense, five yard penalty, first down. Dylan McMahon, a left guard. And you know, when teams run these RPOs, and the ball takes a little bit of time to get out, honestly, I'm shocked that this isn't, it's not a penalty that, that's called more. So it backs up the pack. 
First down and 15. Ball spotted at the 40. At the 26 yard line. And Leary wants to get it in the air again. And throwing short this time. It is Bam Knightby. Cannot get free of Luke Masterson who drags him down. That will lose a yard. Luke Masterson's an interesting player. He's been all over this Wake Forest defense. Mm, That's man. a bad sign for NC State as Bam Knight hobbled leaving the field. And Officials timeout for an injured player. He has been a superstar tonight on kickoff returns, but he's in agony right now. You know, he hobbled off earlier prior to that initial that his first kickoff return. And Well, this obviously a giant story for the Wolfpack as important as he has been in this game and they've stopped kicking it to him very wisely. We'll see if he can continue 615 to go third quarter. You know it looked like he was going to get off the field and you know, oftentimes the players are told you see this kind of continued you know forward progress was stopped the whistle was blown and. It almost just seems like as they were going to the ground, something happened to him. But towards the end of that, look, I and he looks more hobbled than I think I, you know, was anticipating him to see. But that that looks like an injured player right there. That would be a huge loss when you look at the all-purpose yards. So far tonight and really he's been there. He's just their best overall back. Now the good thing for NC State is that Ricky person is more than just a reliable backup very capable running runner in his own right. We'll get you an update on Bam Knight as soon as we can second down 16 for the Wolfpack. Leary trying to make some magic. Long pass and a tough catch right there on the near side by Amezi. Well, he is so tough to cover. Taylor tried to. That goes for 27. And again, this is the matchup. The strength of these NC State receivers going up. Moment of truth against these Wake Forest cornerbacks. And it's a great play by Amezi. And it was awesome by Leary standing in the pocket, taking a hit. Person breaking free, finally dragged down after a lengthy romp there by Mustafa, but he'll gain 11 in the first down. So Ricky Person taking over and now walking off, and Houston will become the running back for the pack. You know, it speaks to the depth of the NC State running back room that you can go Bam Knight, Ricky Person, and then Jordan Houston come in the game. First and ten, NC State on the move. Five minutes left in the quarter. Leary, good time. Amezi again. Trying to make a move on the sideline. Out he goes. Strong safety. Anderson gets credit for stopping in the seventh catch by Amezi. Yeah, and you, you know, you mentioned earlier, Dave, that you know Keon Lassane kind of been a, a feature guy a little bit tonight. And we've seen balls go to Porter Rooks on critical downs. To me, I'm finding if I'm a quarterback, I'm finding 86 anytime I can. So reliable, so strong, so good after the catch. Yes, and the all-time receptions king at NC State. Little razzle dazzle here. And looking for the outside and a slide there out of bounds by the same will pick up five. I think the other thing that can open up a little bit for NC State offensively. You know, especially with Houston you know in the backfield as he comes off now but. This was some now. of the perimeter Ranger runs player. that we've seen from NC State so. And Deion Bergen he's the injured man. Seen this a lot tonight. 
And second down and five four oh two left in the quarter. You know, I think part of that you're, you're right. We have seen a lot of this tonight and I think part of it is. It's been a pretty physical football game. Both quarterbacks have been knocked around quite a bit. We've talked about the magnitude of this football game what winning it does for your chances. To play in the ACC championship game and. You'll bring home a title and think we're seeing both of these football teams I'll lay it all out on the line tonight. Winner of this one we showed you those numbers earlier. With a giant upper hand to be playing in that ACC championship game. But a long way to go yet under four minutes to go in the third Leary facing second down and five. As Ricky person in the backfield. He'll take the handoff looking for the hole but that closes pretty quickly and they string him out. He's going to lose a yard on that carry. With the tackle by Smenda. You, know, you see the physical nature. I mean. Look, NC State is a physical football team. Ground officials timeout for an injured player. Number 12 must leave the game for one play. Well, and he doesn't want to leave. I mean, I think this is it's kind of indicative of what we were seeing. And look, Bam Knight saying, I might be okay, but he looks better walking around than he did earlier. Yeah, good to see him out of the tent, though. And at the moment, Jordan Houston taking the carries. Larry facing third down and six on the 16 yard line of Wake Forest. He wants to throw looking for the end zone and incomplete. Rooks was open for a moment chased by Nick Anderson the strong safety. Yeah, and he's, he's trying to throw a corner out to Rooks because it's zero coverage so you're getting inside leverage. And he's got an outbreaking route and you know, they kind of run out of room a little bit. You know, there just wasn't a ton of space over there. And I think that's one of the reasons Leary missed him. I would have liked to see him take the fade up top to his right to Devin Carter, who also had man coverage with inside leverage. Well, here's Christopher Dunn from 33. And that is no good. He can't make it. His first miss of the game after two makes. And it remains 31 27 Wake Forest. That's a huge stand for Wake defensively. The hold, the hold was good, and you know, snap was in a little into the body of Gill, but it would get it down, and I think you're right. I think it was just hooked. I think Dave Dorn feels like that North Carolina State fan right now. Well done usually very reliable he is NC State's all time leading scorer so a drive of eight plays 53 yards but nets zero points. 253 to go in the quarter let's get out of Kelsey Riggs. Well guys earlier you saw Bam Knight go into the tent and then come back out so we'll see how he is and what he's able to do but his partner Ricky person has actually been sick he stayed in a little while at the half and you see him on the sidelines right now he's sitting on the sidelines getting some oxygen breathing heavy so trying to battle through this for his team. Boy there are a lot of stories in this one and developing as we move along. On the ground to carry by Turner. And so pick up three yards on that play. And Engel is heading out. Tanner Engel has been knocked around tonight. Everybody has. Hartman guns that one and complete to Taylor Morin. That's a first down. Eight yard pickup for the Demon Deacons. You know, Warren just su does such a nice job of coming back to the football. You know, Hartman boarded some time in the pocket. Just the ability to have guys come back to the ball is such a good feeling for a quarterback. Previous play is under further review to review for a possible targeting foul. Possible targeting on that last play, so under review as they take a look late in the third. You know, like 
Shaheen Battle. Look, that, that's. I mean, I think I've kind of said my piece on on these targeting penalties and how hard it is for defensive backs. You know, we have a runner. We don't have a defenseless player, but we certainly have crown of the helmet. And crown of the helmet targeting calls are to protect the tackler as much as they are, if not more, than protecting the ball carrier. And so, you know, if battle gets called for targeting on this, it really is in an effort to protect battle from injuring himself. So I don't know how that, by the letter of the rule, is not targeted. That's got to be targeted. It's crown of the helmet. I yep. mean, and that's, you know, it's one of these things that it, it's After hard. After further review, there was a foul for targeting with the crown of the helmet. Number 25, defense. He is disqualified from the game. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. When NC State now is really thin, you know, a corner from in terms of, you know, guys that they they want in there playing in, in battle. That's a. I think it's just so hard I, to see guys get removed from games when they're playing hard, and, and we need to get guys to change the way they tackle right. and hit. Understand your argument on that by the letter of the rule. It's certainly targeting. Yes. And the tenth penalty for NC State. So those are piling up. Wake Forest had some early. Hartman flushed out of the pocket. Wants to run it. A flag down again as he got ahead to the 50 yard line. Flag dropped with a minute 53 to go, holding. maybe holding. Number it 59, is. Offense. 10 yard penalty. First down. Marcus and Naya with the hold. And it was clear as Hartman. You know, got stuck with the ball. He was looking for more and down the middle of the field when he came off of it. So here we go, 59. As Hartman escapes and the defender is trying to pull away from him, you just see that. Just grabs the jersey, kind of grabs him twice. Definitely got his money's worth on that hold. And, and oftentimes it's a quarterback scramble where now the offensive line doesn't know where he's going to be and they end up grabbing. So backs him up first and 20. On the toss and complete. Wake on the move again. A dart to Banks. And Banks picks up a first down, a 23 yard gain. I mean, Wake Forest just keeps rolling in six foot four receivers. This Here's Banks out, coming back player. to the football. And a well thrown ball by Sam Hartman. And. It's a nice job. Good timing, good anticipation. And. Boy, it's accuracy. It has been a tough night for that young man, Daniel Joseph, 6'3, 265 pound graduate out of Toronto. He's been down often. One minute, 23 to go in the third. You can catch a women's college basketball doubleheader tomorrow afternoon. Starts at noon inside the great Carrier Dome. Neil Ivey and Notre Dame taking on Syracuse. And then number five, North Carolina State hosting Florida right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Great to have college basketball back. Of course, Duke and Kentucky with a terrific game inside Madison Square Garden, really launching the season. 31-27 Wake Forest. A first down here for the Demon Deacons. Trying to do something before the end of the third. Hartman, who's had a choppy night, unleashes that one and it's incomplete. Off Banks, he wanted him again, but not this time. And it's the same thing that we saw earlier on the play to Stewart on fourth down. It's a corner blitz. And now it's just, you know, throwing the outcut and, and Banks not able to reel that one in. Hartman 15 out of 38 234 yards two touchdowns two interceptions and off to the sideline but it's going to be juggled and it's incomplete it was banks again but no catch third down and brings up third down Hartman. 
could not make the play. Was, uh, the official, you know, stating that he was juggling it, which means he didn't have possession. His foot in bounds, and now, you know, another third and long, kind of in no man's land a little bit here. If you're able to get a little bit of a chunk, so I could see this being two down territory if they can get to the 35. Hartman trying to get back into a groove. Time in the pocket. Throwing long. And flags down on the play. A lot of contact there. Banks the intended receiver up against Chris Ingram. Part of the pass. Holding. Number 26. Defense. 10 yard penalty. And an automatic. First down. That's on the linebacker, Betty. Yeah, I think that there was you know, some frustration because you know, Dave Doran and the rest of the North Carolina State sideline felt like Ingram had done a nice job, but it was you know, the tight end running down the middle of the field that was the one getting held by Betty. That's the sixth first down because of a penalty. Able to break free on that rush by Turner and a stop by Drake Thomas. Came in with 74 tackles to lead NC State, really having a big year after the losses of Isaiah Moore and Peyton Wilson. And Perry now back in the game. A.T. Perry, who's been the number one target. Look at that, 20 of them <laughs> in this game. That's incredible. It's the most in five years. In in the FBS and Looking for the end zone and broken up, and it's actually going to be picked off. Tariq Pitts in the end zone, yeah, able to hang on to after zone. the tip. Touchback. First down, NC State. NC State with the football. More in the intended receiver, but Pitts was there. Tanner Engel makes a great play on this football. When Morin goes up to catch it, Look at that punch through with his right hands, and then Pitts mm. able to Dueling just secure it. Of an interception in the end his zone. left hand, and I think that's possession. Is, they'll obviously look at it, but I think he's got possession. Watch Ingle. You know, he's an aggressive player that likes to play downhill. They get behind him, but he doesn't panic. Trusts it, reads the eyes of the receiver, punches through the football, and to me, that looks like control by Pitts right there. I think he's got control there, right foot down. I think this should stand. Tell you what, Tanner Ingle is some player. They call him the Tasmanian Devil, the, the human missile, whatever, breaking this up. And you always have to have an eye out for him. You do, and you know, oftentimes his aggressiveness gets used against him. Where, you know, they try to. After further review, you, the ruling on the field stands. You know, they try to get him to, you know, come up and run support and try to get him in pass coverage. Well, rose to the occasion there, and it's a good call on the field by the officials and a great play by Pitts. By both of those guys. Pitts tiptoeing, and the call stands. 11 seconds to go in the third. Leary throwing deep down the center of the field and incomplete. Wanted a Mezzi there and four seconds to go. Yeah, Malik Mustafa, I think, in anticipated Leary throwing that ball much further. If he's able to just turn around and locate the football, I think he ends up having an easy interception because. Leary kind of drastically underthrew a Mezzi on that post. Sam Hartman, by the way, came into the game with five interceptions. He's been picked off three times tonight. Second down, 10. And complete to Riley, CJ Riley, to end the third quarter. And the Wolfpack with the football. That's the end of the third that quarter. goes for 11. Wake Forest still on top as we begin the fourth in a moment. 31 27 in this giant game of the ACC. ESPN, home of the college football postseason. Welcome home. 
Back at Truist Field here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. A game summary, NC State, 281 passing yards, two picks, Wake with three turnovers. They had nine in the previous nine games. And more flags are down to stop the play here as we get the fourth quarter underway. Wake up 31 to 27. Right of the snap, full start, number 54, offense. Five yard penalty. So plenty First of those down. tonight, plenty of players down because of injuries and more interceptions than you would have guessed with these two quarterbacks. Yeah, and the 12 penalties for 104 yards for NC State. That's why Dave Dorn has that look on his face. It's, you know, both of these coaches do such a good job with their football teams. You know, they're they're disciplined, they're smart. It's just a that's a bad number for NC State. Larry dumps it off short to Van Knight. He's had a pair of incredible kickoff returns, one for 100 yards and a touchdown. Then he got knocked around a little bit, had to go inside the 10. Out and healthy again, it appears. He picks up seven. NC State likes that little angle screen. They do it with a number of different guys. Kind of get the defense to overrun it and hit it back. That's a pretty good pickup on first down. Second and eight, it's Bam Knight again. They string him out. Trevion Red, who's had a huge play in this game with the tackle. And just a two yard gain. Yeah, that's a good job by Roberts. JJ Roberts kind of stringing it out as Bam Knight leaves the field again. Yeah. To Spoke too soon about his good health. I mean, I think it's been the story for nearly every player tonight. I think between Bam Knight and Daniel Joseph is going to be a busy week in the training room. Third and six for Leary. Looking to go airborne again. He fires that one and the pass is broken up on the near side by Wake Forest and a stop by Taylor. And there's another flag down in the backfield. Holy number eight offense. Bell is declined. Fourth down. So they decline it, bring it up fourth down. And bring on the punting unit. Wake Forest to get the football back and on top here early in the fourth quarter, 31 to 27. Gill with five punts, averaging about 45 yards. Leads the ACC in punting average at a little over 46. Warren standing back at the 21. Racing to the side, cuts a corner, gets to the 40, across the 50-yard line. A big chunk for the Demon Deacons by Taylor Morin. That's a huge return. In that situation, I thought there was a chance that he'll kind of really get it back there and pin him down and Warren does a nice job of making the first guys first couple guys miss. It's a great job by Blake Whitehart of kind of just using his body to shield rather than a kind of a crack back type block and Warren does the rest. Yeah, 35 yard romp. So Hartman back with the football. It's been a very up and down night for him. Trying to make it end on a glorious note on the run. It's Ellison. Let's get out of Kelsey. Well, guys, I got to talk with Taylor Moore in this week just about this team and the closeness that they have. He said he's had a blast being a part of this group. It's nothing that he's ever been a part of before. And he's like, look, I know people say that, but I really genuinely mean it. The camaraderie is something that I've just never experienced, and it really starts with their leaders. Pass complete, breaking free. Perry got some extra yards after the catch. He'll pick up 19 yards before Ingram finally stopped him. This is timeout for an injured player. And another injured player down. Tyler Baker Williams. He is down for NC State. We've got to take the break. AFLAC policyholders have been paid $37 billion directly. AFLAC. That's a lot of money. Uh -huh. Did somebody say money? He said AFLAC. Well, 
if they're paying out billions of dollars to help cover unexpected medical expenses, what's the difference? Coach Prime, what? No smoke machine? Affleck. Looks like Affleck is ready for prime time. <laughs> hey, coach to coach, what do I need to do to get one of those jackets? Get help with expenses health insurance doesn't cover at Affleck.com. Fuel your grind with Gatorade's proven formula and the right blend of electrolytes to help you on your journey to greatness. You can go big or you can go big. Bigger fries, bigger drink. Just 80 cents more with any meal. Only at Zaxby's. And see Ghostbusters Afterlife exclusively in movie theaters. The worldwide phenomenon. Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. S-H-A-N-G. Shang. Reddit is now streaming. Nice one. On Disney+. Plus. Oh, where's his face? He's a bit sensitive about that. Marvel Studios Shang-Chi. Now streaming on Disney+. Plus. It can be easy to steal your identity. Now, it can be just as easy to help protect yourself. LifeLock helps detect identity threats. If there's a problem, we work to fix it. Go to LifeLock.com. Instead of putting your vibe in words, we're putting it in a store. Introducing Stitch Fix Freestyle, your personalized store. Take your style quiz at StitchFix.com. Every new day offers opportunities to connect, chances to motivate and inspire, moments to express well-deserved thank yous and congratulations with products that bring smiles, celebration, and long-lasting impressions. There's certainty in that. 4imprint gives you that certainty with the right promotional products and a caring, trusted team dedicated to your success. Creating meaningful connections starts at 4imprint.com. 4imprint. For certain. Not everybody's going to make it all the way through this vital game in the ACC tonight. Some slumbering there on the berm, but 31-27. Everybody else trying to get close to those heaters. It's 39 degrees as of this moment here in Winston-Salem. Feels it. Sure does. Hartman stepping up and crashing into that line. Wake Forest with the advantage. He's going to gain six there, but hard earned. I think there's been a few times tonight where Hartman pulls the ball out of that mesh, is really expecting to throw the football, and then when he doesn't like the look or gets pressure, he just follows the back and been effective running it that way. Wants to hang on to it again, takes a crunching hit. Takes some punishment tonight. This one laid out by Devin Van after a one yard gain. It really has, but he kind of hops up. And almost got that Andrew Luck style. I, I think he gets back up and is like, hey, really good hit, man. Like, nice hit. Like, it's almost like he's congratulating yes. yeah. Tanner Engel for that two in it. Does pay the compliment. Thrown for a couple of touchdowns. But he's been intercepted three times. Looking toward that end zone again. And a very tough catch there by the tight end, Brandon Chapman. He's going to pick up a first down. A seven yard grab that had some hair on it. It's the third time we've seen Hartman on this drive get to the third progression. Look at him looking to his left. He goes to one to two on the left side. Comes back across the field to the third guy in the progression and makes a great throw. First and goal trying to follow a blocker looking to bounce outside but he stumbled. Close to the five yard line. Second down and goal. And that's another example of, of Hartman expecting to throw the ball, I think, and then taking off and running. And he looks hobbled to me. I, you know, and I kind of saw him hobbling earlier in the game. And well, he joins the crowd, right? Because everyone else has been hit hard tonight in that kind of game, second and goal. Trying to get Wake into the end zone again. A handoff here for Ellison into the pile straight ahead. One yard pickup. You almost wonder if that call was made as Dave Clawson is looking at number 10 out there, just kind of really struggling to get back, you know, behind center and 
saying, all right, like, let me give him a, a, a break to, to kind of catch his composure here before third down when I either ask him to run it or make a great throw. On the five-yard line, third and goal for the Demon Deacons. Hartman throws short, and they're going to get into the end zone again. Touchdown, Ellison. He's in from four yards out. Touchdown, Wake Forest. Justice Ellison. Well, Wake Forest, you know, they say they're not really a game plan offense, but here's what happens. You're going to have this motion that came over here and comes back. When that happens, it causes confusion in the secondary for NC State. And so now you have Ellison, who's essentially unblocked. You know, Thomas tried to get there, but he's coming from way too far to, to cover the, the back, who's on the right side of the quarterback. And, and the extra point by Skiba is good. Wake Forest with some breathing room. Breathing room because it's a great design, and Sam Hartman able to deliver to Ellison for the Demon Deacons. We love our house. Been here for years. Yeah, but there's an animal in the attic. At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. We save a lot. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. A big bow box says a lot about a person. Like, they have a mighty hunger, a powerful thirst, and take tailgating very seriously. Game day and beyond, grab a football-ready big bow box. With Bonfire, you can easily fundraise by selling custom shirts online, upload your artwork, or create a design right on our website. In these unique times, you can still make a difference. Fundraise with custom shirts today on bonfire.com. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, the CEO of MyPillow. Cancel culture has not only affected myself and MyPillow, but millions of you out there. My employees and I want to personally thank each and every one of you for all of your support. At MyPillow, we not only have pillows, but we have hundreds of products, including my new slippers, bathrobes, sleepwear, and my new beds. We're offering the best gifts ever for the best prices ever. For example, we have this exclusive offer on the standard size my pillows, regularly $69.98, now only $19.98 with your promo code. We also have the queen size my pillows, regularly $79.98, now only $24.98 with your promo code. And we have the king size, regularly $89.98, now only $29.98 with your promo code. So go to MyPillow.com now and use the promo code on your screen or call the 1-800 number below to receive this exclusive offer. ACC Network College Football Primetime is presented by GEICO. Save even more when you bundle home and car insurance. Members of the United States military from around the world proudly displaying their loyalty to both NC State and Wake Forest. Pre-game ceremonies, just awesome. Some parachute magic with the flag and sticking the landing. Really cool to see and Veterans Day earlier this week. And I know you're proud of your son who's a veteran. My son Mike, yep, 82nd Airborne. He did a lot of that. Short kick, keeping it away from Van Knight, trying to. And then here's that pretty good hit, Jordan Houston, and a return of 15. And again, a flag down. Far too many of those here in the second half. We're into the fourth quarter, 38 27 Wake Forest. Personal foul, targeting, kicking team. Play is under further review. So another targeting possibility. It's under review. You know, Dave, these special teams, we've seen them be an issue in the past for Wake Forest. And that is going to be Ryan Smenda. And on a special teams play, if they lose him, which they may, 
That'll be a really tough loss for Wake Forest. For everyone from players to parents, football offers unlimited growth with even more to learn. Visit futureforfootball.com to get ahead of the game. Find out where to play, what equipment to use, and get the latest from leagues around the country, including pro tips and parental info from the experts. These resources make it easier than ever to create your plan and make your play. Y'all heard it here. If you want to be fresh, you got to refresh like Subway, like the new Baja Steak and Jack Tender, thicker cut steak Wait, and... Wait, so you're not coming out of retirement? I'm just here because Subway has so much new, they bought time in this press conference to talk about it. Our playbook has countless guys' hairstyles because we know no two guys are ever alike. Good fading. Oh, great texture. Less pomp, more adore, Brittany. Got it. Hey, <laughs> nice haircut! Sport Bliss! Love the delicious taste of fried foods? Now you don't have to say no. Enjoy all the crunch without the calories when you create healthy, delicious meals with Cuisinart's Air Fryer Toaster Oven. Our innovative technology lets you fry food with ultra-hot air and 98% less oil for healthier results and no messy cleanup or lingering odors. With seven functions, this multitasking oven also bakes, broils, convection bakes and broils, warms and toasts, so you'll use it every day. Say yes to healthy and delicious with the Cuisinart Air Fryer Toaster Oven. Smile Direct Club. These are Smile Direct Club aligners. They can turn a smile like this into a smile like this in as little as four to six months for less than $3 a day. Choose Smile. See how much insurance will cover at smiledirectclub.com. This is a dream come true. Want to turn back? Nope, just getting started. Wound up and ready to go. Well, they looked at targeting on Ryan Smenda, the talented linebacker. Take a look. And they are calling that crown of the helmet. That is targeting. He is disqualified. Smenda also had a targeting call against Army. So NC State with the football. And complete on the side to Amezi to move the chains in an 11-yard gain. Yeah, and just to kind of finish up on the targeting, you know, Smenda, it's a special teams play, but he's one of their better defensive players. It's a big loss for Wake defensively, and you know, Chase Jones, number 21, will come in in his place. And it may be one of the things that help you know, North Carolina State fight back offensively. Very time to throw, but he throws that one incomplete. They sent Carter on that route, but incomplete, bringing up second down. And you can see Leary talking to him. He's kind of holding up a signal like, hey, this is what the route was going to be, which is why I threw it where I threw it. Bit of a miscommunication there between quarterback and receiver. Leary didn't seem too happy about it. Football at the 39 yard line of Wake Forest. Under nine and a half remaining here at Winston Salem. Larry with the pass incomplete. A lot on that one intended for Lassane. He's really gotten involved in the offense in this one. It really has. And, you know, typically it's been Amezi and Carter, Fair Thomas, you know, working the slot. We've seen Porter Rooks, who's a you know, a player they're excited about, but it's been Lassane, you're right, Dave, who coming into tonight only had six catches. NC State just two for 12 and third down conversions. And passing it one for 10 is Leary. Trying to come up big here in third and 10. Wolfpack quarterback on the move, throwing, and it is complete. And a big pass play got it to Devin Carter and a first down. This isn't a Patrick Mahomes type throw, but it's it's pretty close. Carter's running an in-breaking route. Leary is escaping to his right, and as he's escaping to his right, throwing a route that is breaking to his left across his body, they tell you not to do, but with his arm talent, he can make throws like that. Arm talent, you hear that phrase a lot with him. That went for 16 yards. Going to go short into the flat and drag down Amezi. 
And taken down by Keith. Here's that throw across the body you talk about. I mean, you see it. He's sprinting to his right because he's being chased. And Carter's breaking in. They say, don't do that. That's a really impressive throw. You see his talent. And the NC State, just at this point, you see 48 attempts. They're just better at throwing the football right now than they are at running. So he's over 300 yards again, 325 and counting. 820 to go. Will something open up? He goes for the end zone and he just fires that one out. Threw that away. Second down and 10. And it's a good job by Wake there. North Carolina State's trying to run a, a corner flat combination, but with a switch route. And Wake Forest does a good job of passing it off, which forced Leary to throw it away. And you know, Bam Knight back in the lineup, but you know, Devin Leary, you see him with his fourth straight 300 yard passing game. I just think they're more effective, and some of these got to have it situations. I think they're more apt to throw the football than try to run it. The school record for touchdown passes very much in reach for him. Back to throw once again. To the end zone and caught. Tremendous play by Amezi. He makes the grab from 13 and a touchdown. Boy, he is just a dynamite target. Dynamite target and the play by the quarterback was dynamite as well. Amezi's in. Ball's you know, high and up over the defender gets his initial foot down and you know Leary they say he doesn't get bothered they say you know he's, he's kind of unfazed by adversity and some of the things around him that was a great example of it and now they'll go for two yep. to get within three 38 33 Leary with an empty backfield looking for a two point conversion Throwing again, and it's caught again, and they convert it. It's a Mezzi once again. Spins around, makes the play, and down the stretch we come. Two-point conversion. This is the biggest matchup discrepancy in the favor of NC State is 86 on the defensive backs for Wake Forest. And that time it's Jasir Taylor. And if you see how Wake lined up, they put four out to Leary's right side. And then they had isolated on the left side, Emeka Amezi. And so basically if it's one-on-one, -on -one, you've got the green light to, to give him an opportunity to touch it, and it's exactly what Leary did. Emeka Amezi is flat a handful. 6'3", 210 senior has had a magnificent career. All-time NC State receptions king has him dancing. Touchdown catch and then a two point conversion to make it a three point game with eight minutes to go. So Morin back at the goal line. And that one will go right through and they'll bring it out to the 25 yard line. You take a look back, you know, at the touchdown. You see Leary climbing to his left, making that throw in the run. That's really, really good. And then you get to the two-point play. You just get one-on-one -on -one coverage. And look at where that ball is thrown. And Mezzi knows, look, hey, this ball could be thrown towards the, you know, the back end line, or it could be back shouldered. And that's where Leary threw it. An outstanding adjustment to the football in concentration. He's going to be fun to watch on Sundays. He sure will be. So Hartman with the handoff, Wake Forest back with a football, and suddenly a three-point game. Van with the stop on Turner. And a pickup of just two. Brings up second down and eight. This was the game that so many in the conference wanted to see this kind of a contest trying to wriggle free as Turner but couldn't do it. Ingle coming up from the free safety and that is a one yard pickup. Yeah, and here's what Tanner Ingle's doing. He's kind of slow playing you know his you know commitment to the run. You know he's kind of you know holding his ground as if he's going to stay in pass coverage and then once he thinks that ball's been handed off it's like he's shot out of a cannon to the line of scrimmage to make a play and 
He's been really, really hard to decipher what he's doing for Sam Hartman. He's done an excellent job getting ball carriers to the ground tonight. Seven minutes to go. Hartman just 18 out of 43, three touchdowns, but also three interceptions. And complete to Stewart. And Stewart extending across the 40 for a 12 yard gain and a first down. Sam Hartman basically threw it to the only guy that was getting doubled. It was Stewart. Fortunately for Hartman, Stewart was able to split the double on his in cut. First down 10 for Wake. Up by three here in the fourth. On the carry, Turner. Looking for an edge, couldn't find one there, and Van tied him up. And a gain of one. Both teams ranked in the top 20. And a game as big as it gets in the Atlantic Division. Whoever wins has a giant upper hand. Hartman going long down the center, has a man, and it's broken up, incomplete. Intended for A.T. Perry had two men with him. Had two men with him, but again, kind of splitting what looks like a double. You know, this time just running right through it. And you know, I think Boykin gets his left arm in there at the same time. You know, like we see A.T. Perry, that's a drop. Like we've seen A.T. Perry all season long make those catches. 22 yeah. targets and just five catches. That's astounding. It is astounding. Came in with 42 receptions and 10 touchdowns. He's been working all night long. You'd expect more catches, though. Third down nine for Hartman. That pass, and once again, going to be complete to Morin as he struggles. The ball popped free. NC State says they have it, but was he downed on the play? Five forty six to go here in the fourth NC State still acting like they picked up a loose ball. We're on the field is a catch and the runner was down first down. That's the ruling on the field. Take a look. There's more in there His backsides on the ground yep. before that ball comes out. They are going to review it but it looked like the proper call on the field. Yeah, and They should review it and. You know, he's got that ball as his kind of left hip hits the ground and picks up 14 if it stands. We go to the break. America, after the past year ish, everyone deserves something new. So, ATT is giving everyone our best deals on every iPhone, including the iPhone 13 Pro with its amazing camera. Like everyone that worked from home or welcomed a new family member. There are the dogs. Our deals are for everyone. It's not complicated. AT&T is giving new and existing customers our best deals on every iPhone, including up to $800 off the Epic iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 Pro. Stay tuned to see how you could get my Ultra Nonstick Pan free. That's right, free. Does this look familiar? <laughs> A pan that sticks and burns and never comes clean. All my pans are either burnt or scratched. I hate it. Well, I'm here to change all that with Gotham Steel. It's the latest in non-stick cookware technology. Nothing sticks to this pan. Everything slides right off. And when I say non-stick, I mean it, even if it's burned on. Give it a swirl. Wow. <laughs> it is so easy. I love it. Oh my, look at the swirl. I could do this all day. Gotham Steel is made with Thai Cerama, a layer of durable titanium coated with super slick ceramic. This pan will last, it's mega tough. Try beating these eggs. Won't it scratch the pan? Absolutely not. Metal utensils won't scratch and it stays super non-stick. It's so easy, everything slides right out. That's amazing how it rolls right off. The surface is like satin. I love this pan. Nothing sticks to this pan. No grease or oil needed. How about we make a pizza the upside down way? I'm gonna throw in a little bit of cheese, some tomato sauce, throw in the crust, and all I need is for you to flip it. Okay, I'll give it a try. <gasps> wow, nothing stuck. 
That's our Thai ceramic surface for you. I'm sold. Even flames won't damage Gotham Steel. Fresh peach flambe, delicious. And look, a pan that wipes clean with ease. Gotham Steel is oven safe up to 500 degrees, and it's dishwasher safe. With this pan, it's going to be so much easier to cook now. No sticking, no scratching. This is just the perfect pan. Now, here's a crazy deal from Gotham Steel. Get our ultra nonstick pan for just $19.99, and we'll send you a second pan absolutely free. Plus, get our 90 day nonstick money back guarantee. That's a huge free offer but only if you act now to order call 1-800-656-1278 or go to gothamsteel.com that's 1-800-656-1278 or order online at gothamsteel.com coming up on a huddle post game immediate action to the finish behind us another exciting chapter added to miami fsu and lebron shouting out the acc network all that coming at you post game david tim Gentlemen, thank you very much. 38 to 35, Wake Forest facing a first down and 10. Hartman wants to throw, but the pocket collapsing. He's going to get sacked on the play. Abraham Conte nose tackle. And they're going to lose three. Hartman looking for Perry to his left, and I think he thinks he's going to get single coverage. NC State runs a player out underneath and he gets stuck holding the football and that's why Conte is able to just continue with his pass rush and get home. Second and 13. Hartman. Racing. And we'll throw that one out. Pressure brought by NC State's Josh Harris and also by Jones. They were on him to bring him third and 13. Less than five minutes to go. These two quarterbacks have combined to throw nearly 100 times, 97 times in this game. Hartman is 20 for 47, 290 yards. Three touchdowns, three picks. Coming for him, lofts it up for Perry. Perry battling, it's busted up, and a flag is down. A flag down on the play. Chris Ingram in coverage. 449 to go. Seven. And a pass Defense. interference. 15 yard penalty on Ingram. And an automatic first down. Automatic first down. I was surprised to see NC State come after Sam Hartman there. That was zero coverage. That was all out blitz on third and long. When really you just need to, I think, play soft, keep it in front of you, and you'll force a punt. They decided to come after him and make it easy for Hartman to get one on one with Perry, throw it up, and get the PI. 13 penalties, 119 yards against NC State. Zellison dives forward. Jones with a tackle. And I think with with where we are right now with four and a half minutes left in this game I, I think we're going to see Wake slow this down now that being said you know they're, they're not running the football effectively tonight and so you know the reality that you're going to be able to hold this long enough to kind of prevent NC State from getting an opportunity you know, to get the ball back and I don't know that there's enough clock it, to do that. Harman keeps is going to run it. Nice hole opens up. He's bouncing outside, getting inside the 20 yard line, and then out. He was trying to stay in bounds there to run some more clock. And I, the, I mean, the ideal situation for Wake, obviously, is take as much time as you can off the clock and then score a touchdown. You see, Hartman, yeah, he is trying to do that. I think with where you are in the field, we, we saw, you know, North Carolina State with less than a minute left in the half, you know, come down and score with no timeouts. I just, to me, this feels a little early to really, really, you know, tap the brakes. Play clock all the way down to one. They get it off. And a handoff, Ellison. Ellison picking up some yards. Stopped by Joseph. That's a six-yard gain. 
will Leary have enough time? Running down almost three minutes. And to think that this drive started with 8.07 left in the quarter. Second down four at the 12 yard line. This is the 12th play of the drive. Wake Forest up by three and running down that play clock down to four now. Hartman, another handoff. Ellison busting past the five yard line before he gets stacked up. He rips off an eight yarder and they move the chains again. Yeah, and that, that right there, you know, now I think you're in a situation where like you just got to hold him to a field goal because now you are going to run out of time. It's an... 250 to 14 on this long drive by Wake Forest. What a time to do it. They get to the four yard line. First and goal for Sam Hartman. And I think if you're Wake Forest, you're running the ball on first and second down. Remember, Hartman can be so dangerous running the football as well. Ellison straight on, and he is in. Touchdown. A four-yard scamper to the end zone. Justice Ellison cashing in. Cashing in, and then how about just the physical nature of this Wake Forest offense? For a team that really was struggling to run the football tonight to get into a situation where you're trying to burn clock and run the football to be able to just push NC State back and get it in the end zone is impressive effort by the Wake offense. Indeed, not what you think of when you think of Wake Forest and their high-powered offense as Skiba drills it to make it 45-35. But Hartman and company have taken a 10 point lead as we take a look at our Bojangles big moment. Well, here, here's what happens. The big ball moment is these guys up front just working double teams. And then it's Ellison the back finding his way through there with some tough physical running. And that's pulling Drake Thomas into the end zone. And you know, with no Christian Beale Smith tonight, that's been a Pretty good effort, and listen, they don't care that it's in the 30s. Heck no. They care that they got a pretty good football team to watch. And closing in on 6-0 in the ACC and 9-1. and Ellison, by the way, quietly a real hero in this game. Three touchdowns, two rushing, and a touchdown reception. Justice Ellison, as you mentioned, with Christian Beal Smith out taking on that hero role in the backfield. He's definitely carried it the most and obviously with those numbers been super productive with it. Another short kick and a fair catch at the 21 yard line by Jordan Houston. So here comes Leary who's had such an impressive season underrated in some circles. But can he pull off a miracle here with a minute 47 to go? And his team down 45 to 35. Devin Leary, 31 for 50, 338. Three touchdowns, two interceptions. And it's going to be complete to Thomas, who paid for that, but picks up a first. That's a 20 yard gain. And, you know, we know they have the quick strike ability. They have the receivers to get it done, and they have a quarterback that can certainly attack all areas of the field. Pitches that one forward, and a run made by Person. Ricky Person chased out by Red, a six-yard pickup. But just a minute and a half to go, second down and four. And with all three timeouts, you know, we saw it at the end of the first half. I mean, that, that could be an eternity with all three timeouts left for NC State. Leary 
dropped the ball, scooped it up, has to run for the sideline, and throws that one away, bringing up third down and four. It was Valaine who who wins on the pass rush, and you know, I thought he was going to get to Leary. Leary loses the ball and is able to kind of gather it, and I thought he's maybe going to find Carter working the sideline. I won't be surprised to see you know, that angle screen that we see NC State run sometimes. Ricky Person in the backfield with Leary. Minute 21 to play. Throwing short to Person and trying to get there. And stopped by Chase Jones, but he does get three yards and they are short. Yeah, I think Chase Jones does a nice job there in the open field. It's almost like Person. You know, thought he was going to be able to sneak by. And, well, in this got to have it situation. For NC State, quite honestly, I think you get up a quarterback sneak with the way that Wake Forest is aligned. Fourth and one. Pursuing a handoff. First down and a little bit more than that to move the chains. And he gains five yards. And a timeout, NC State. NC State. Their so down to two out. for Dave Doran. Yeah, I think they needed that timeout for, you know, person to catch a breather. There's also, you know, a chance to stop the clock and regroup. You know, people always talk about the defense getting tired in two-minute drive situations and how that can affect the pass rush. And there's obviously truth to that. You know who else gets tired? The offense. Oh, sure. The receiver yep. sprinting downfield. Over and, and over. And then sprinting back, you know, to the line of scrimmage, to only to sprint down the field again. And, and, you know, you think about the magnitude of this football game. We talked about it at the top, and we've touched on it throughout the game. But, you know, essentially, with Wake Forest being 5-0 and in the conference, a win tonight... You know, it creates a path for them that's a really, really good one. The ACC championship game, and obviously the same drill for NC State. Of course, they'll travel to Death Valley to take on Clemson. Larry unleashes one and a catch by Thomas. And a first down. Moving the football quickly, 23 yards. Listen, I will tell you this right now. I would not be against kicking the field. much time as possible first and ten for Leary time to throw sets up and a pop right there at the goal line incomplete and it was Thomas again the intended receiver say hello to Evan Slocum the free safety yeah Slocum with a nice play drive on the ball they're trying to hit a little bender it's Thomas Bending into the middle of the field with two split safeties, and it's a good job. It's Slocum just getting that shoulder to the hands, you know, staying away from the hit to a defenseless receiver, but yet separating the man from the ball. Second and ten at the 18-yard line. Leary again rifles that one. It's Thomas looking to break free, trying to extend forward. He got out of bounds. <laughs> Getting out of bounds is critical there. Now, listen, here, I think because you're inside the 10-yard line, like now you've got to get your touchdown. Now's the chance to get your touchdown. Absolutely. Back outside the 20, you know, because you still need a lot to happen. But in from here, you know, this should be four opportunities at least where you're throwing the ball to the end zone. And I'd work a mezzi. First and goal. And incomplete. Indeed, it was Amezi again, the intended receiver. Leary at 400 yards, 36 for 58. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of a grab. Not sure a little did. bit. A grab yeah. by Taylor. I'm going to tell you right now, unless he is doubled, I'm trying that at least two more times. But it does look like they're going to rotate a player over the top. Second and goal. That's a dart trying for the end zone, leaning ahead, and did he get in? He did, touchdown. Touchdown, Devin Carter. Eight 
eight yards and the score. So there's your touchdown for the Wolfpack. Yeah, and, and, and there's the Mecca Amezi effect because you know you throw the fade to him on first down. Wake decides, look, we're going to roll coverage over the top. Well, what that does is it creates more space for the route combination on the other side, which is why Carter's able to catch it and punch it in. Done on for the extra point. And it is perfect. What a finish we have here with 45 seconds to go. This is what I mean. Here's a Messi over here. So look what they have. One defender, two defenders. Well, when you do that, now when you run Carter underneath, there's just more space to operate and obviously an opportunity to punch the ball in. So Emeka Mezzi, what he did earlier in the game in the red zone, and the fact that they threw it to him on first down, I think dictated how Wake Forest wanted to defend it, and it's a good job of Devin Leary seeing it. And I think now, you know, with 45 seconds left, we're looking at an onside kick situation. And if NC State is able to get it with two timeouts left, <laughs> that's well, a long time. Sure is. 45 42 with 45 seconds to go. And Mezzi, by the way, 10 catches, 133 yards, two touchdowns. He's come up big. And Leary with 400 yards. He's done. Going for the onside kick, and he got it. Did it go 10? Ricky Person able to scoop it up. I think there's going to be a question of whether or not Ricky Person allowed it to go 10 yards. To me, it looked like he did initially. Aerial touching by the kicking team. Touching the ball before. It can travel for 10 yards. Ball being placed at that spot. First down, Wake Forest. Did not go 10. All right, so the 45-yard line is where the ball needs to get to. And... You know, Person, I think, starts to slow down. You see him there, slow down. Oof. And from that angle, it's going to look like he is, you know, touching the ball early. But you see him wait. And man, is that close. Is it ever. He was hesitating as really long as he possibly could. He's under further review. So they're going to review it, obviously. Oh, is that close? And and I'm going to tell you on that look, because you know we're coming at it from the other direction. From that look, it looks like you know what I think he maybe did allow it to go the full 10 yards. Looking at it from this angle, obviously behind, it seems like he grabs it early. Giant call coming up here. We've had one of these here before where, yep. you know, you just. And that seems early to me as we look at it from the, the highest angle we have. And But when I say early, I mean. Is there enough evidence to overturn it? I mean, called the other way, I don't think you're flipping it. And so called this way, I don't think you're flipping it. So that's I, under review to see whether he allowed it to go 10. Ruling on the field was no. Yeah, and you know, when you look at it from some of the other angles and, and when you take this into consideration, you know, he, you know, as we kind of zoom in on this here, and I think that he's just before it goes 10 yards. Would appear to be the case. When I say just, I, I mean like less than a foot. We're talking inches. Inches. Wow. That is the... Last angle we can show you. 45 seconds to play. 45, 42. Wake Forest. You know the crazy thing is, is when you see it in his like in his chest. You know he's straddling that that As the, line. Review, the ruling on the field stands. And a cheer goes up for Wake Forest. The play stands. Illegal touching there did not go 10. NC State still with two timeouts remaining. 45 seconds on the clock. And the Demon Deacons with the football. Trying to ice this one. 
in the chill of Winston Salem and pick up their ninth victory in their sixth in the ACC. And a hit here by Engel. As Hartman stayed upright there, 42 seconds to go. We take a look at tonight's Timeout. player spotlight. Brought to you by Geico. Hartman 20 out of 47. Fifth consecutive game with three touchdown passes and a rushing touchdown as well. He was also intercepted three times. And Dave, I said it earlier for Sam Hartman. It didn't start out great at all. It was actually really a struggle. But really good players have the ability to fight back through it. And I think that is exactly what Sam Hartman did tonight. It wasn't perfect. He had drops. He missed some throws. But he continued to battle. We saw him banged up and the way he ran the football, the way he hung in there under pressure, and then the way he delivered the throws at the most critical yeah. moments down the stretch. I think that's it, Tim. I think great players Incredible. do that. He's having a great year. And it was clutch. Second down, 13. And taking a knee. On the other side, a dejected Devin Leary. Timeout, NC State. 37 the for 59. Threw the football 59 timeout. times. 408 yards, four touchdowns, and a pair of interceptions tonight. And so tonight, even with some of the struggles we saw early from Hartman, I mean, he still turned around and had a great night. And then, you know, for Devin Leary, he was incredible. Like, the, NC State is a throw-it-all-around-the-yard type of offense at this point, and Devin Leary's been great. You know, the other, the other aspect that's, that's been really good tonight, I know it's, you know, 42 points, one of them on a kickoff return, but with the Wake Forest defense, Yes. Found a way to battle and hang in there and do enough. They've had some really good defensive games. They've had some really poor ones, but when they needed to, they were pretty stopped, particularly in that first half. And that will do it. Dave Clawson and the Demon Deacons remain perfect inside the ACC and the Atlantic. They are now 6-0 in the conference. 9-1, and one. they knock off an outstanding NC State Wolfpack team by a final score of 45-42 to 42 in a game that had just about everything. It had everything. It had injuries, great quarterback play, fun to watch. Yep. Let's get out of Kelsey with Dave Clawson. Coach, an in-state rivalry game. As he says hello to one of the other players. Coach, an in-state rivalry game. You knew what... Messier, listen, this connection right here has been worked on for years, guys. The reps that these two have together, the trust that they have built. I guarantee you, time and time again, these guys have made this play in practice. Did it a couple of times tonight. NC State down 21-23, and we set points with coming to Flurry, getting to the half. Leary here one more time. Devin Carter makes up for the mistake. The 21-yard touchdown. Redemption pack within one. And then we pick up the third quarter. EJ, are you kidding me? Yeah, and look, that touchdown previous was huge right before the half, giving them an opportunity to get it to 20 to 24. And then again, you get rewarded by doing that, have a huge kickoff return for a touchdown. NC State in the lead. Zonovan Knight, bam! And just like that, NC State leads 27-24. Just over 11 minutes in the third. Hartman rolls out here. Just a confident performer. Oh, shade of Great shot, just a ball that no one could catch but his receiver. And he dug down there to get it with both hands, cradled it underneath, beautiful, beautiful job. Now, defensively making plays, Eric, and what a play here for Tanner Ingles. Wow. How about the concentration for the young man? Just pop it out right to his teammate. Get two feet, three feet. Just a beautiful play there, swing momentum. Derek Pitts Jr. hauls that one in, and it'd be NC State ball, but here, Hartman. Justice Ellison for the four-yard touchdown. Wake leads 38 to 27 at this point. Midway through the fourth, NC State still has a chance. Leary looking. Leary finds Abeka Amezi wow. in the end zone for the 13-yard touchdown. Unreal. NC State converts on the two-point conversion. Wake four still leads by three. But Wake would have a response. Eddie Justice Ellison runs this one in. 
helped to arguably seal the game. Yeah, he sealed the game and just the offensive line giving him that extra little push that he needed to get into the end zone. <laughs> Give the big guy some credit right there. Pack would need an onside kick to extend this game and have a chance. Eric, this is good, right? It's so close. It was at nine and three quarters. Nice little Harry Potter reference there. You gotta <laughs> let it go 10. <laughs> and they caught a legal touching. It did not make it 10. And with that, Wake goes on to win 45-42 over the Wolfpack. Hey, let's go! And the fans on the field celebrating. The battle for Atlantic was a battle of two quarterbacks. Devin Leary, 37 of 59. Sam Hartman, 20 of 47. The pass yards leading in Leary's manner, 408 of them. Whole lot of touchdowns. Uh, what a quarterback back and forth tonight, EJ. Were you impressed with both or one more so than the other? Yeah, I was impressed with both. Really just fighting through adversity. When you have interceptions and turnovers, when you're playing good against a good football team, that's going to happen. You can't, you know, kind of put yourself in the tank and think, oh, the game's over, I'm making too many mistakes. Both of these guys persevered, and I love the way Sam Hartman was able to move around down in the red zone. That's where quarterbacks become special, when they get down in that low red, because the defense, they have everybody covered up. So once he breaks the pocket and gets out, Guys got out of the rush lanes. That's when you find open receivers. I knew it was going to be a fun year this year because you knew there was going to be a lot of great quarterback play. And when you got a bunch of kids that don't know what they're doing and making mistakes all the time, it's just boring. It's hard to watch. But, yeah. but when these cats are playing at a high level, you see games like this. It yeah. was awesome. It really was, Coach. And, and just the execution at an all-time high. Guys, guys going back and forth trying to make a big play, a turnover, and then come right back at it. Eddie, it was amazing to see this quarterback play. It was. And, I, and I'll give Sam Hartman a lot of credit for sticking with going with A.T. Perry. Yes. You know, E.J., yeah. as a quarterback, sometimes you lose confidence in your guys, but yeah. not him. He stuck with A.T. Perry throughout the game. Didn't have the success that they 